So let me welcome uh, Raghunathan ji, president of FRNV, and Sushil Jain ji, who is representing the UHV team. Today we are going to have uh, this short session from 10 to 1. So without a whole lot of uh, introductions from my side, I would request uh, Sushil ji and Raghunathan ji to take it up for the introductions and particularly for the purpose of the workshop, why we are here. So over to you. Mr. O.P. Rawat, former election commissioner, our advisor, the FRNV has joined. So we welcome him on the uh, net and for the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Rawat, for joining us. Uh, as for myself, I am, uh, uh, well, I was in government service. I retired as uh, Chief Secretary of Delhi. And then I took over from Mr. Sridharan on his request. From uh, last two years, I am the president. We are building up the organization and we have regional chapters. And uh, I'm happy to also say that uh, we are bringing out a very good bi-monthly magazine. We have uh, quite a few well-known contributors and the magazine we, uh, I would like to, uh, to be a reference book whenever on any topic we would like to know about uh, uh, the values and all. Happily, the, uh, that's happening. And uh, we have a governing body as well as we have a large number of members and uh, life members and uh, annual members. And uh, hopefully, we will, uh, very soon, we will build up this organization to, uh, to strength. And we have, fortunately, covering the teachers because we feel that children should be inculcated values. And uh, we have the good workshops. And we are going to have uh, the July and August workshop in schools in uh, 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 Delhi. I would like uh, others also to try in that basis to conduct a workshop. We would be able to help you as to how to go. And thank you very much. I'm very happy that a large number of participants have uh, uh, registered. And hopefully this program will benefit. As Mr. Aslan said, this is normally they do it for three days. And for our uh, introductory um, reasons sake, they are only doing it for a half a day workshop. And if everyone feels that it is necessary to have a three-day workshop, I would request um, Professor Astana and others to uh, conduct the three-day workshop, which we will later on communicate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm Sushil Jain. Uh, uh, many of IIT Delhi. And, uh, I welcome all, all the participants. It's so wonderful that uh, this uh, event is happening uh, for the first time. Uh, and uh, I'm very thankful to, to FR and we team uh, that it could now happen, you know, after uh, quite a bit of effort. <clears throat> uh, USV team has been working on, on the Universal Human Values Program for last two decades. And I'm, I'm associated with it since, since 2004. And I've seen it uh, happening uh, in developing the, the curriculum, the, uh, developing the, the methodology and, and uh, attending the programs, workshops for teachers. It's, it's a wonderful uh, effort has happened uh, over the years. And uh, in fact, 40 plus universities are already uh, incorporated this program as a mainstream uh, you know, curriculum. AICTE adopted it in 2017, have done tremendous work in this direction and in preparing teachers, champions for this. <clears throat> See, any, any society has a lot of uh, many uh, aberrations you know, in society and it can be so many, you know, but the, the core issue remains one. One is that the right understanding itself. If people don't understand themselves uh, rightly, then the aberrations occur. And if you start working on each aberration separately, it requires tremendous effort. So it's, it's always better to uh, prevent it 
rather than uh, you know <laughs> address later on when when things have happened. So India needs two two things uh, in my opinion: uh, quality holistic education, which is now recommended by NEP 2020. It has come into policy, government policy. And the second is that India needs enlightened, self-actualized leaders. So we should be developing them so that they can take the, the whole thing forward, you know, in the best way. <clears throat> so I think uh, today's session is going to be very enlightening. And at least it's in an introduction, but we can definitely, uh, you know, uh, organize a three-day and seven-day workshops later on. Uh, as the interest comes up, as the pe more people join us in this effort. So wish you all the best and please attend carefully, and focused way, uh, and keep your videos on. It's a very interactive session. So you can ask questions anytime, any any uh, any uh, time you, you can just stop and raise your hands and uh, ask questions. So. Wish you all a good session. Thank you. Thank you, Sushil Ji. Thank you, Raghunathan Ji. Uh, I'll just go over the, the proceedings, how we are going to proceed. Uh, from now on, we will have a session on what is our aspiration as human beings and how to go about fulfilling it. Dr. Kumar Sambhav and Umesh Jadav Ji, they will conduct this session from 10, 10 to 10, 12. We'll have a short break, but during the break, the 10 minute break, please stay connected. After that, uh, Umesh Jadavji and myself, we will share what efforts have been done by the UHB team. It's a volunteer team of about 500 people. Mostly they are faculty members, uh, directors, vice chancellors of universities and making this effort for humanizing education all over the country uh, on a pro bono uh, basis. So uh, I will share uh, these things with Umesh ji. And then we will hear from Raghunathan ji and Sushil ji about uh, taking these things forward uh, uh, and what uh, your closing remarks are, we will have that. Uh, towards the end. So now I would like to invite uh, Kumar Sambhavji to share. Kumar, you may uh, share your presentation also. Welcome, Kumar. Okay. Namaste once again, everyone. Uh, myself, Kumar Sambhav. I happen to do my BTech, MTech, and PhD from IIT Kanpur. And during my days of BTEC only, I happen to feel that the education that I'm getting here is not complete. Kumar, your voice is frozen. We are not able to hear you. The network connection is turned faulty, I think. While we are waiting for him to come back, I see there are 117 participants and counting, though it will be difficult to acknowledge each individually. But I thank you all for your participation. Yes, Kumarji. So let me say that uh, for any kind of participation that we are doing for value education, we are not taking any remuneration. And this is just as a gift to the society. In that process only, we are conducting this session also. Along with me, I have another resource person, Umesh Jadav Bhaiya. Bhaiya may kindly introduce himself briefly and then I will proceed with the session. Umesh Bhaiya. Yeah, Namaste Bhaiya, Namaste to all. Uh, my name is Umesh. I, uh, I was into academics for many years, but uh, I made myself completely free from uh, you know, that full day responsibility uh, in 2017. And since then, I'm spending time to understand myself and whatever you know, the understanding I'm able to have within me, I'm trying to share it with the society and particularly with the institutions which are connected to the education. So thank you so much, Bia. Please go ahead. Yeah, just to add that Umeshi was a faculty member 
at Gedu College of Business Studies in Bhutan. So he has uh, international experience. And uh, that's where we, you know, met uh, Umesi and he has been taking a whole lot of lead in uh, making this content available, particularly in Maharashtra and the central region of India, but all over India. So welcome, uh, Umesi. Yeah. Kumar, thank please. you, thank you. Yeah. So the title of the session is Basic Human Aspiration and Its Fulfillment. And in that process, we shall also be discussing about the meaning of holistic development. We all are working for development of the society as a nation. So when can we say that our development is holistic? Where do I have to keep my camera on during the session or I can turn it off? Uh, you can turn it off because you'll be, you know, marking the slides or doing something in that. So it's all right. Right, right. Yeah. But you can switch it on whenever you are uh, okay, yeah. answering questions or something like that. Yeah. So we all have multiple aspirations and we have been working for it day and night. But are we able to make out what our basic aspiration is? This is one important issue that we are going to discuss. And we'll keep the whole session interactive. It will be in the form of a dialogue. So I will be sharing certain things from my side. And then we can take it as a proposal, as an open proposal, and give an open thought to this, and then share our views, how we reflect upon this. So one basic issue would be to be able to make out the basic human aspiration. And when I am talking about the human aspiration, I have to look at myself. What is my basic aspiration? For each one of us, this is something that we are going to investigate. And then what would be the program for its fulfillment? If I'm able to make out the basic aspiration of myself as a human being in my life, then what program I have to take up so that it gets fulfilled? And in that process, as I go on exploring, we can also see that we are able to make out the program for the whole society. So what would be the program for the society so that the basic aspiration of every human being is fulfilled? And then we can see what would be the role of education therein. So this is something that we are going to take up. We can make it more and more explorative, but there's some limitation of time also. So with that, what I'll do, I'll be keeping some proposals. I'll be inviting you for sharing your views. And as per the limit of time, we'll be moving forward also. Now, we can see that we are all acquainted with education. There is another word associated with education, which is called a sanskar, the inculcation part. So how can the education sanskar be the pillar of an equitable and just society? A good thing with this century is that education has become available to almost every human being on this planet to a large extent. There could be some pockets on this planet where education has not been able to make its way. But still, if you see, Almost every human being is now exposed to education. But still, we are not able to see that we are moving in a direction where the society can be equitable and just. So what would be the meaning of education that enables this? So what we expect that the education sanskar has to be humane. And that would mean that through the process of education, the child is able to develop a worldview, a perspective which can be called as humane what I am, what the other is, what my relationship is, what the human order is. This kind of perspective can be developed, not limited to only getting a job, getting a good package, going abroad, you know, touring the whole world, not like that, but a holistic view, which also encompasses my own close relations, my health, uh, my uh, role in the profession, my role in the neighborhood, in my society, in the nature, with birds, water, animals, plants, trees, I'm able to get that kind of holistic view. Then only the child can contemplate upon the human values. Value means participation. What is my participation? I'm able to contemplate when I'm able to uh, go through the process in which my this worldview gets developed. Now with this understanding, if I have to pick the skills, then I will pick those skills which enable me to live with human conduct. I will not pick such skills which may allow me to accumulate wealth, but is not humane, which is based on injustice, which is based on disorder. So I can pick the right kind of skills, which enables me to live with human conduct. And then the education can be the pillar of developing such human beings who are a part of human society, a human order, 
who enable a human culture and civilization on this planet, isn't it? And let me say that this is not the first time that we are making this kind of effort. We have been making this effort throughout the ages. There have been people, and we have a feeling of glory for all of them who have been able to uh, accomplish to whatever extent possible. And in that process only, I am putting forward this proposal. But we can see that now that education is enabled for every human being, so in place of limiting this process to certain section of the society, we can expect that this can reach every human being if properly guided to education. Now, when we talk about human education sanskar, then we have to decide about the inputs. What input can be termed as humane? So there are going to be certain basic guidelines which we have to understand. For example, the content has to be universal. Whatever we are sharing in terms of human education, if it is not universal, universal means it is applicable to every human being, irrespective of caste, creed, gender, sect, region, whatever. Then uh, if it is not universal, then it will not lead to uh, life which can be called as humane and which can be harmonious, isn't it? So these guidelines are very important and we can share our views on this also. Secondly, it has to be rational. It has to appear to logic. We cannot just uh, take anything for granted. And particularly if you see through the education, the technical education in particular that we are uh, providing today, the rationality in the students have gone up, has gone up. And whenever we are sharing some content, the students want to reason out, they want to logic, and we have to promote that. So I'll also say that the content that we are sharing here or in any kind of workshop, uh, it is, uh, rational and we always ask you to uh, apply your logic there, the rationality part, <clears throat> and see whether it appears, it appears to your logic or not. Thirdly, it has to be verifiable. So uh, whatever is being proposed, I have to verify within myself. There is something in me, when I refer to that particular innate faculty of mind, I'm able to see that, yes, this is acceptable to me naturally, and this is not acceptable to me naturally. For example, if I say that what is acceptable to you naturally, feeling of position or feeling of relationship, then you can verify within yourself, isn't it? So that verification has to be inbuilt in any kind of input that we provide for value education. We, again, cannot just go by sermonizing or giving some moral stories or fables, not like that. It has to be something which the child is allowed to verify within and then respond. And the whole class has to proceed like that. And not only within me, I have to also validate in my living. When I go to live accordingly, does the uh, process give me an output which is acceptable to me naturally? For example, does it lead to mutual fulfillment? Does it lead to mutual happiness? So it has to be verifiable within me as well as in my living. And finally, it has to lead to harmony at every level of my living. Be it at the level of individual, family, society, the whole nature, it has to lead to harmony, isn't it? Now, when we provide this kind of input, then the skill education that we are imparting today can be value guided. And then the society can be in a state which is equitable, which is just. It ensures justice for every human being, isn't it? So let me have some reflection on this. Are you able to see that this is required or not? Any kind of reflection here? Can I say something, please? Yes, please, sir. Uh, I'm Vijayesh Mathur. Uh, we've been on a mission tied to responsible citizens for the last five years. And uh, what we want people to start practicing exactly what you are doing in universal human values. It's a combination of uh, having humane consciousness and humane values where we help we conduct ourselves in such a manner that we care for fellow human beings as well as the environment. Uh, as luck would have it, ever since COVID happened, we've seen a very, very large scale change in the consciousness and the empathy and the compassion of human beings with respect to others in trouble. And uh, yes, we agree with you that these human values have to be inculcated before going to school by the parents in the homes. Our current generation is actually confused because what they see in the world around them 
is not what is being asked of them to do. So the whole thing begins with self-reform, self-awareness, consciousness of being what you are, awaken your consciousness and start behaving in a manner that you follow universal human values and then have other people do the same. That is our pledge for being responsible citizens. I'm sure uh, one other observation I would like to share is that uh, a lot of thinking is happening. A lot of uh, thought exchange is happening. What is missing is bringing it down to behavior of the common man. To a great extent, it has happened, but it needs to be done in a much faster and accelerated pace, and we need to institutionalize that effort if we can. Thank you very much. Nice, nice, sir. So we are able to see the need for this kind of education as it was shared by PGSD also. So in this session, we are going to talk about the basic human aspiration. When we talk about value, basically I have to be clear about my basic aspiration and the basic aspiration of every other human being. Then only my life can be valuable, the other's life can be valuable, isn't it? And when I'm able to see my basic aspiration, then I also need to be clear about the fulfillment part, how to fulfill it. In that process, we will have a look at the meaning of holistic development and also the role of education there. And this will also give an idea about the complete content of the workshop or the courses on human values that we have and the process of this session also. And you can also see what would be the expected achievement from that understanding while going through the session here. So as I mentioned earlier, whatever I said here in the proposal, and it could be the case that what I'm sharing from my side matches your own thoughts. So you may agree to it, or it does not match your thoughts and you may disagree to it. But this is not the key issue, agreeing or disagreeing. So do not assume it to be true or false, but rather verify it on your own right. And when you go to verify, can refer to this innate faculty of yours, the natural acceptance. So I was giving an example, you know, like what is acceptable to you naturally, feeling of relationship or feeling of position. So can you share in the chat box here, what is acceptable to you naturally? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? What do you feel? Sir, I would like to add what has been already said by the predecessor. Yeah. Am I audible? Audible yes. Yeah, my request is uh, when you put in this education and the values, it starts, I'm not innovating the wheel, but it starts with the mother and the family, as he rightly put it, common man. Mm -hmm. Second is the school, and third is the environment. If these three things are kept in perspective, maybe possibly we can uh, achieve the goal which we have set forth. Yes, you were rightly said, but if you see, the parents, the teachers, the policy makers, the implementers of the policy, everyone goes through education. And if the education is rightly shaped, then we are able to prepare parents of tomorrow, and yeah. policy makers of tomorrow, citizens of tomorrow, who will be That's responsible. Sure. Ji. Nice, sir. So we have to verify on the basis of our natural acceptance. And let me say that this is a product dialogue. And we already are in a process of dialogue. And this dialogue starts between me and you, but it soon becomes a dialogue within your own self. So I'll be sharing certain things on my side. You can take it as a proposal, investigate within yourself, and then put forth your views. And you see that in this whole process of dialogue between me and you, it takes the shape of a dialogue within your own self. You start asking yourself, you start questioning your thoughts, your feelings, your ambitions, your desires, your way of life, your uh, whole uh, uh, perspective of things. So, and it takes the shape of dialogue within your own self. And this is what we need to ensure through education that every child starts this kind of dialogue within one's own self. And yet there are two realities. <clears throat> So as Bijeshji was mentioning that we have to be aware about what we are. At the same time, we have to be aware about what we really want to be. So there are two realities associated with each one of us. One is what we are, and the second is what we really want to be. Isn't it? 
So do you think that you are the same or different? What do you think? What you are? What you are includes your thoughts, uh, your desires, uh, your behavior. Uh, your personality, what other people think of you? It is not Pardon, only uh, what you are, yeah. what you are self, and what other people think of you. So there are three aspects of personality. Okay, so for what you... What people think of you? So okay. You may be thinking something else for yourself and what you want to be, but what other people think of you? Sure, so like that can you? also be included. How that do can you... also be included. In fact, when you talk about... Into a discussion, uh, what we are is determined by what we do. And how what other people, people think? see what we do and whether it is good for everybody else and us is what makes the difference. Sir, the example is better than precept. But the society okay. goes what they think. They think. Yes, Satish ji, uh, your voice is not very clear. Say it again, please. Uh, I'm saying uh, the third facet of personality is what other people think of you. Yeah, yeah, that is what you uh, want, can... what you want to be, but you are living in society, and then what other people think of you. So this is this aspect of the personality which affects many times. Okay. In fact, you'll see that if I'm having this dialogue between what I am and what I really want to be, so what others think of me, I'm able to rightly evaluate. Otherwise, I get influenced or sometimes perturbed, and the set of others is not a single person. The whole society is there. So one person may be having one kind of thought about you. Another person may be having another kind of thought about you. So these things become important to us when we are not able to ensure this dialogue within us. So fine, that can also be well taken. If you see, if you are able to ensure this dialogue between what you are and what you really want to be, then what others think of you gets resolved. Otherwise, we are driven by or we are taken away by what others think of us. And we are not able to be what we really want to be. Anyway, as you go along, this will be more clear. So if you talk about these two aspects also, what you are and what you really want to be. So do you think the two are the same or different? You can respond to the chat box. This chat box is a good way to initiate this dialogue. So your participation could be there in terms of putting in words, whatever you feel in the chat box here. So do you think the two are the same or different? What you are makes you like your behavior, your thought pattern, your attitude, your conduct, your way of life. They are what different. You really want to do. Sir, I just observed and made a comment is that example is better than precept. So unless you yourself give an example, there's no use preaching values. Yeah. So, so what I'm sharing here is something that includes me also. So my behavior, my work, okay, my uh, imagination about others, my own attitude. So I have to question for myself, is it the same that I really want to be or something different from that? Now, here I'm entering into this dialogue and here each one of us has to enter into this dialogue. So the purpose of this whole workshop is to initiate this internal dialogue, isn't it? You'll see that the more gap is there between what you are and what you really want to be, we are in problems, we are troubled, we are uncomfortable. But if I am the way I really want to be, that is, I am the way I naturally accept, then I am at peace with me. I am in harmony within, isn't it? So let me again ask a few questions to explore it further. In fact, as we go on putting forth some more proposals, it will get it will get exemplified further and further. So let us ask ourselves. For each one of us, we have to respond to this question. Do I want to be happy? What do you think? Who doubts that? Do I want to be prosperous? Yes, uh, Hiralalji. Who doubts ask, that? Pardon, sir. Who doubts that? Who doubts that? Everybody wants to be happy. Yeah, yeah. So each one of us wants to be happy. How about prosperity? Do we want to be prosperous? That's a part of happiness. Yes. So the feeling of prosperity can be a part of happiness. And do we want to have the continuity of that? Certainly. So let us ask ourselves once again, do I want to be happy every moment or at times? 
every but moment. These are subjective every and moment. objective questions. We are trying to find out values and then we build it. Because then I don't know whether we are going into the same way we like to. Our purpose is to find the values, how to build the personalities, how to ingrate in the children, starting from the school or from the home. And then that will change the whole perspective of a human being, how to be positive, how to be negative. Yeah, so whatever meaning you associate with happiness or prosperity, with that given meaning, do you want the continuity or not? Sir, yes, but happiness itself is a relative term. You go deeper, there are so many contours to it. You cannot subject it to a certain area. So if yeah, you want so... an, a... Material so that's why I or said, you want a spiritual one, then put it a spiritual one. So happiness is, is a really deep sense of happiness. It's a different thing for each human being. Yes. So Miracle you have to respond about yourself. Gee, gee, I got your point. Uh, you have to respond about yourself. So where we may consider it subjective to begin with, but when you are looking at Hiralaji, and if you are asking about yourself, do you want to be happy and do you want to be happy in continuity? Whatever meaning you associate with happiness. Yes, my sharing and happiness would be definitely to help others, to bring some happiness to others would be my happiness. Yes, fine. With that, we want to have the continuity, isn't it? Yes. Yes, nice. So we have to reflect upon this, isn't it? Now, at the same time, we can reflect upon our state of being what we are. So we want to be happy, but are we happy? We want to be prosperous, but are we prosperous? And we want to have the continuity of the two, but is it continuous? Is there a continuity of happiness, prosperity or not? What do you think? Is there continuity assured in our life? Or even though we want to have continuity, there is no continuity. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are unhappy. Sometimes you feel prosperous, sometimes you feel deprived. Does it happen or not? Yes, it does happen. It does I also happen. want uh, young people who are in the group to respond also because yeah. uh, at various stages our perspective changes. So I want a cross-section of people to participate. I would be grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, this whole session has to proceed with your own sharing. There are not so many there, things to be shared. Yeah, there are a lot of young people in the group. They should also participate. Please give your, please interact. So yes. try to reflect upon this. Right there, if you can, if you allow me, that uh, happiness, prosperity, and continuity, uh, as uh, Sri Rangunathan had said, is a function of which phase of life we are in. It's so that we, all of us seem to be in a phase of life where we've gone through the rat race and now are talking values and spirituality. And oh, there are a lot of people still uh, young, and they are. Right? And it is so important that's why now. I want those who are below 40 can you respond and yes. we'll take it up like that, please. Yes. Thank you. And, and if we can enlighten the young people to define happiness as the way we exactly. So let us also know. This world will change at a much faster pace. Uh, if I may say, our youth was not the way the young of today are living. Their value systems, I think, are superior to what we have been. Let's, uh, let's take uh, the response on the chat. Uh, yes, Sabaji. yes. It'll be Each one of us can respond the on the chat. Yes or no or whatever, you know. Yeah. And also try to see if there's a gap, then why this gap between what we really want to be and what we are? Why the gap is there, isn't it? And what we are doing to fill this gap? Is the gap getting wider and wider day by day or getting filled up? These are all very basic issues. See, we have been toiling day and night. We have been working so hard to make our life fulfilled, isn't it? But still, it may be the case that the gap is there. We may not be moving in the right direction. So even though we are toiling hard, we are working day and night, isn't it? Putting so much of effort, learning so many skills, trying to uh, uh, learn uh, more and more futuristic things. But still, it could be the case that the basic gap is there. 
and we have to address this issue. This is a very basic issue. If we are having this gap within our own self, right, then this gap is going to reflect in our relations, in the society, in the family, and the gap will be widening. Yeah, any response to this? Why this gap at all? Between what we are and what we really want to be. Come on, some response, please. May I suggest uh, ask by name, so pick up some name and ask. I think that would be better than the Yes, please pick up some name and ask. Anyway, let us but, proceed. Let us proceed. I but, hope all of us are able to uh, get this proposal that we are sharing here. But yes, your reflection is important. So just try to see whether our effort is to understand the true meaning of happiness and prosperity and to ensure it or it is just for accumulation of physical facility. It may be the case that we have assumed that once we have a large amount of physical facility, then automatically I'm going to be happy, automatically I'm going to be prosperous. Is that true? So where we are putting in effort for the first choice or the second choice, just try to make out how much time we are spending every week to understand the true meaning of happiness and prosperity and how much time we are spending for working for physical facility, accumulating physical facility. What would be the distribution of time here? Yeah, very, very, very pertinent question for young people as Sri Raghunathan Ji has said. <laughs> yeah. uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for giving me a chance to speak. Uh, sir, I feel like the first question which we were discussing uh, uh, when you had shared the previous slide, I feel that happiness is about contentment and trying to be happy and joyful with all that we have. And coming to your next question, sir, uh, most of the time we are in this rat race and with, with you know, social media everywhere, we are in constant race of we are constantly comparing ourselves with others, lives of others. However, their goals may be different from ours. So I, I feel that we are in a rat race and we feel that just by accumulating wealth or having a lot of you know luxuries, we would be happy. Which later on in the second half of our phase of our life, we, we tend to realize that no, it's about contentment. It's about that constant uh, bliss that we should learn to be in instead of comparing ourselves. It's not about because had it been just about accumulating wealth, then all the rich people would have been very, very happy. So I feel that happiness is about contentment and not about accumulation of wealth or luxuries. Nice, nice, ma'am. So you'll see that it may be the case that we are largely assuming that by accumulation of physical facility will be happy and prosperous. And that's why we are getting uh, engaged with this more and more, isn't it? Particularly, we'll see that the ease with which people are able to accumulate wealth now, it is also enticing the rest of the society to move in that direction. That people are becoming billionaires by working for a few years. And that is also enticing the rest of the society, particularly the young children, uh, to move in that direction. Yeah, Pratik Ji. Uh, thank you for posing this question. I think uh, it gets me into a loop of uh, uh, self-discovery where I uh, actually compare <clears throat> Mr. Narayan Murthy who is wealthy and yet uh, contributing, yet happy. And then there are, there are in, uh, individual examples who... Um, you know, there is a lot of uh, struggle in, in earning money and being happy. So these are two situations which I see and yet both are present in this world. For me personally, what, what stands true is uh, happiness is, is, a, is a function. It's a very, it has a lot of variables 
uh, one of the facets uh, is contribution to the society um, you know and to humanity uh, in terms of my actions so whenever i wait for someone uh, you know just to keep the door open uh, it's it's fulfillment it's happiness uh, or for that matter whenever uh, there is a small action of keeping the lift door open uh, for someone to just join in for a chat uh, till we reach the common floor it's it's happiness and also when when there is some alms which which uh, the family pays when we are uh, on the road uh, on a signal to a to a beggar that's also uh, you know keep some some level of satisfaction and happiness so i think uh, looking for happiness is something uh, happiness and fulfillment these are the two words which i think uh, are apt to discover yet that journey of discovery in itself is uh, is very specific to the individual okay and it at the bottom line cannot be money uh, yet it can give the privileges it can be it can be uh, more sustainable uh, in certain manners uh, but i think the 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 goal remains uh, that fulfillment and happiness uh, throughout my my journey so I, i'm i'm not able to comment on everyone's because i think this is specific uh, hot of yes what, yes what we have to talk is, about ourselves yeah yes yes it is more of me looking in myself my goods my bads and from my bads what i can take off or take or accept uh, to make it more fulfilling and happy nice uh, i'll just give one input here to ji that try to also look into uh, the program that would ensure the continuity of happiness that example that you gave could be certain momentary things we which, which are giving us happiness momentarily but could there be some program which can ensure happiness and continuity try to look into that aspect also sure yeah, thank you sanjeev satish ji yes i have a point ji the it changes with persons as they progress in life now a student wants to be a I I'll be happy. Uh, just a moment, sir. Just a moment. We are not talking about the masses here. We are talking about ourselves. You have to talk about yourself. Is your effort to understand the true meaning of happiness, prosperity, or? I'm talking of myself. I am talking myself. I felt in younger age I'll be very happy if I get this thing. I am very happy if I pass engineering with distinction. So uh, when I got that, then I said I'll be very happy when I get a good job. So this process changes. You are not. We are not looking for that. I have to be saved later on. So that process. How do you inculcate that? Yeah, otherwise, how the person will be motivated to work for that? If all are looking only happiness, all will be saved. Who will work for the country? A scientist want to be. He feel happy if he becomes a scientist. So yeah. Uh, so you uh, feel conflicts in this one. So you feel that happiness will lead to inaction. Person who becomes happy will not work, will not no, act. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Yeah. So it's not the case that once you become happy, you will become inactive. Person Maybe you will be. If I work for this, so that is the happiness for him. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine, fine. No, no, so let no, us I proceed. Let us. You have yeah. taken Satyajit's comment uh, uh, out of context. Satyajit says that personally he will be happy, but that does not mean. Giving to others and giving to the society and to the country as a whole would be also form, but this has to be inculcated from the very beginning to one individual so that he develops that value and go further. It and there has to be continuity. It doesn't have to stop at certain stage. Yeah. So what I mentioned was the second point. The first point that is said that happiness may change with time as he looks into his own personal life. So there again, you have to see. there be some program which can ensure continuity of happiness this is one thing and once i am happy then what is going to be my program what would be my participation in the society in the nation this is also something that i have to be clear about uh, nice so we have started investigating we have started entering that brother dialogue within that is nice to see there are some responses in the chat box also coming directly to me so nice uh sir the uh good morning everybody good morning ma'am good morning uh may i share my view yes 
Yes. Uh, uh, according to my view, the happiness is a state of mind which uh, differs from individual to individual. Today's state, um, most of the time, the life has become easier because of the gadgets uh, we are being provided with. And uh, the especially the young generation, most of the time they are with their electronic gadgets, phones, mobile phones. Uh, uh, yeah, Sofika, just know. a moment, just a moment. We are not yeah. talking about others. We are talking about oneself. We have to talk uh, about yourself. I'm coming to that, sir. I'm coming to, I'm, I'm going to connect it with it only. So uh, the electronic gadgets are certainly isolating ourselves because we are into social media platform. We seek the validity from the social media more than the individual interactions. And as far as the prosperity is concerned, it is also individual to individual. Prosperity is not about materialistic all the time. It can be regarding the spiritual prosperity as well. So happiness and prosperity is a different perspective for different individuals. Thank you. So <clears throat> about yourself, do you want to be happy and prosperous in continuity or not? This is something that we are trying to address. You have to look at uh, yourself and then yeah. trace it. See, happiness to me is uh, small, small activities. If I can be successful on my daily basis, I am happy. But that doesn't mean that my uh, views uh, can be shared with the other and the other person can be happy regarding that. Prosperity also, I value spiritual prosperity more than materialistic prosperity. But the certain other individual would like to become financially prosperous, then materialistic, then spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, prosperity as far as possible. So happiness and prosperity are the two meanings which are differently taken, different perspective by different individuals. Again, again, I'll say, but anyway, uh, continue with that and also try to see whether your basic aspiration matches your state of being means whatever you aspire to be as a human being, basically your current state of being, is it in accordance with that or not? Or there is a gap and if at all there is a gap in what is the reason? This is something that we are trying to reason out. If there is a gap, then day to day basis, we try to achieve it. It doesn't mean that every day it, uh, anybody has to be happy or I am have to be I have to be happy regarding that. There the value system comes into play. Where am I going wrong? What are the mistakes that I am not taking into care? So that is where we try to achieve happiness each and every day. Okay, nice, nice. So let me add one more question here. So have you assumed that happiness and prosperity will be ensured? when we have enough physical facility, as it came out through uh, deliberations also, that uh, just not necessary. wealth may not be prosperity. So have you assumed that once we have enough physical facility, we have accumulated a lot, we are going to be automatically happy, automatically prosperous. Is that true? What do you feel? Not you necessary. The chat box? Pardon? Not necessary. Not necessary, yeah. So then the question arises, what effort we are making other than accumulation of physical facility? Sir, uh, Ji. Ji. Uh, I would like to add something more to it. Acceptance Ji. and surrender. Despite your financial status, despite your social status, mm -hmm. you have to have a feature of surrender, acceptance and surrender. That, would also, that also adds to your happiness. Surrender uh, to what? Surrender to God, surrender to a supreme being. Like whatever time comes and uh, I I will I resolve to be happy. I resolve to accept that time. Santushti, and, uh, Santushti. In Punjabi, in Guru Mukhi, there's a, a line that is called Tera Pana Mitha Lage. Like whatever is given to me, I take it as a prasadam. Absolutely. Be it positive, be it negative, okay. I take it as a prasad. Yes, yes, sir. Now, I want to say something. Let us look at India. Everybody was so happy. And they will keep their doors open because we were not prepared and we became slaves for years. What is that happiness? Earlier, the Bengali system, they changed it. And because we were not prepared for what others are doing to us. Today, only the scientific advantage, those who have, they are, uh, they are controlling the world. You can't be happy under these surprise that they make you survive. Now, look at this Indian case. In, 
when sir the again so please, sir i say that we let us see let us see the vision came everybody was so happy as the wait 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 wait, wait sir they keep the given house was open now and they made us a slave of that so that is not happy na and then we are fighting for something else for freedom so it has to be combination what the country require what you require and what the self require yeah satish ji just a moment well, we are looking happy, outside rb uh, whole rb leaves that i want to have i don't want to work that is not the approach so uh, there has to be balance of the system in the society today india wait, is wait, wait, satish ji we are number 5 in, in the scientific world so all this is not the issue are, this is not the issue see see wait wait we are not yeah, talking wrong. about the nation we are not wait wait satish ji it's not the question of looking outside we have to look inside we have to look within us and then try to uh, ask this question to ourselves uh, this is what we are trying to do let me listen to uh, sarika ji also to look inside and become safe uh good morning everyone ji <laughs> sarika ji uh, good morning everyone i hope i am audible ji audible clearly audible ha huh. yes sir uh, in my opinion my idea of happiness is that instead of worrying about the past or the future we should appreciate things just just they are in the you know moment and in the now instead of comparing our physical assets or our materialistic status with others okay thank you okay fine so well taken all the opinion that shared that is shared right now now let me uh, उटसाइडी what i am and what is naturally acceptable to me we start focusing here on this part of the being then we are going to be resolved day by day isn't it in fact during the pandemic one statement was moving the rounds doing the rounds and that was when you cannot go outside go inside so in this session we are trying to go inside we are trying to look within now something that we can see is that physical facility is necessary so we are not denying physical facility now you will see for an animal that when an animal has lack of physical facility it becomes uncomfortable and when it gets the physical facility it becomes comfortable for example if you look at a cow if you provide the cow you know food twice a day right water thrice a day provide it a shade isn't it it becomes very comfortable if if it has a stomach full of grass it sits comfortably and chews the cud but does it happen with human being also when a human being has lack of physical facility he becomes uncomfortable unhappy but once he gets the physical facility he forgets about it and starts thinking about 100 other things does it happen or not if we try to look back into our own life there could be some time where we felt that we did not have enough physical facility but once we had that facility could we make out that yes now it is enough or we still kept on accumulating still kept on working for that more and more If that is the case, then we have to really look into this. Ji, Arti ji, you have raised uh, your hand. Yes, yes, sir. I because I agree with this particular statement because uh, our mind has the tendency uh, that it wants more, more and more of everything and uh, things that we attach our happiness to. For example, we aim that okay, I want a very luxurious car, maybe. in the next 5 years once i buy that i'm successful in buy, purchasing that car for myself so that will give me gratification only for a short duration of time until and you know uh, unless uh, uh, until i see a more luxurious car a more expensive car which my neighbor has so now my mind would give me that signal that what you have is not enough now i want that so when it comes to physical our mind is yeah. never <clears throat> satisfied that is why yeah. in our scriptures also it is said and a lot of speakers before me have also highlighted the importance of spiritual growth once we go within 
we realize we have that contentment also we have that inner bliss also and then we would not attach our happiness with all these things yeah uh, how, in how fact what the term is like that? Yeah. how do you link it with society, happiness of society and the country okay so oh, that is in fact when how do you link it to that? okay this uh, yeah, sharda ji sharda ji wants to say namaskar namaste जी मैं अपनी बात कहना चाह रही थी सवाल उठा था कि खुशी क्या है हैप्पीनेस क्या है ये एक बात सत्य है कि सबसे पहले हमारी जो भौतिक आवश्यकताएं हैं शारीरिक जरूरत भूख प्यास ये पूरी होनी चाहिए लेकिन इसके बावजूद भी हैप्पीनेस जो है वो इंडिविजुअल मैं नहीं मानती मैं हैप्पीनेस ये मानती हूँ कि वो एक यूनिवर्सल फिनोमिना है जो सबके लिए एक समान है जो अभी स्पीकर बोल रहे हैं उनको खुशी खुशी किसमें मिलनी चाहिए जो मैं बात कर रही हूँ मुझे खुशी किसमें मिलनी चाहिए सबके लिए खुशी का एक पैमाना होना चाहिए उदाहरण के तौर पर अगर मैं कहूँ कि मेरे पास सारी मटीरियलिस्टिक सुविधाएं हैं इस समय मेरे पास अपनी ओल्ड एज अच्छी तरह से बिताने के लिए अच्छा पैसा भी है मकान भी है कार भी है सब कुछ भी है उसके बावजूद भी बहुत सी चीजें ऐसी हो रही हैं, जैसे मैं अभी तत्कालिक परिस्थिति ले लू मणिपुर की घटना सब कुछ कंफर्ट होते हुए भी मुझे ये बहुत दुखी कर रही है और मेरे लिए ये चिंता का विषय है कि कल को औरों के साथ भी हो सकता है तो इसका मतलब की खुशी केवल एक ऐसी स्थिति नहीं है एक ऐसी फिनोमिना नहीं है जो हर इंडिविजुअल के लिए अलग अलग है इस समय सभी को दुख हो रहा होगा उस घटना पर तो यानी कि खुशी एक वो स्थिति है जो सबको किसी एक केंद्र बिंदु पर ले जाती है कि समाज में बहुत कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है तो निश्चित रूप से जिनके पास वो मटेरियल चीजें कम हो उनको भी खुशी मिल रही होगी कि हाँ ये बहुत कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है अब कैसे इनको प्राप्त करना यही एक सवाल है और इसी के लिए हम सब लोग जुटे हैं जी, जी बहुत अच्छा कुछ कुछ वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लोर दैट कुड देयर बी सम मीनिंग ऑफ हैप्पीनेस व्हिच इज यूनिवर्सल दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू इन्वेस्टिगेट वेरी नाइसली सेड मैम जगदीप जी यू हैव अनम्यूटेड योरसेल्फ एंड प्रेमा जी वांट टू से समथिंग हियर जी लाइक आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट सरेंडर तो उसी सरेंडर में मैं कुछ लाइनें जोड़ना चाहूंगा कि कैसे अपनी एटीट्यूड से हम सरेंडर कर सकते हैं वेट 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 सर दिस इज नॉट द इशू दिस इज नॉट द इशू लेट अस टॉक अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर इशू दैट व्हेन अ ह्यूमन बीइंग हैज लैक ऑफ फिजिकल फैसिलिटी ही बिकम्स अनकंफर्टेबल एंड व्हेन ही हैज द फिजिकल फैसिलिटी ही स्टार्ट्स थिंकिंग अबाउट हंड्रेड अदर थिंग्स वी आर ट्राइंग टू फोकस ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर इशू ओके जी एनी अदर रिफ्लेक्शन ऑन दिस हां जी आप हैप्पीनेस को एक्सेप्ट करने के लिए है ओके i just want to say that uh, happiness from material accomplishment and happiness from values wealth and values ka balance agar santulan theek rahega to aapki happiness achieve ho sakti hai alag phase of life mein is wealth aur values ka balance change hota rehta hai jab aap zindagi mein aage badh rahe hain to aapko apni करियर प्रोग्रेशन वैल्यू वेल्थ क्रिएशन प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर योर फैमिली एंड एवरीबडी एल्स एस्पिरेशन इन चीजों से हैप्पीनेस मिलती है जब आप हर एक चीज जो कर सकते हैं आप कर चुके हैं तो फिर वैल्यूज आपके ऊपर आ जाती है और वेल्थ इसको भी देखते हैं कि वैल्यूज समय के साथ लाइफ में बदलती है या समय के साथ निश्चित रहती है दिस अगेन समथिंग दैट वी कैन एक्सप्लोर ये बैलेंस डायनेमिक है और हर एक का अलग इंडिविजुअल है इसके साथ साथ वेल्थ वैल्यूज के साथ सोशल अवेयरनेस और सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी जो शारदा कुमारी जी ने कहा वो भी एक डायमेंशन है हम हमारे पास सब कुछ है फिर भी हमारी खुशी कभी कभी दागी हो जाती है क्योंकि कहीं पे गलत कुछ हो, और हो रहा है जिसके बारे में हम कुछ कर सकते हैं या नहीं कर सकते हर एक के लिए बस नहीं है बढ़िया। एक एक सवाल आता है कि खुशी है क्या चीज वॉट इज है सर अगर खुशी को एक जो 
फीलिंग ऑफ प्लेजर उससे थोड़ा सा अलग करके देखें तो खुशी के जो मानी है वास्तविक अर्थ वो कुछ कुछ समझ में आने लगता है एक that once we get the physical facility we simply forget about it and start thinking about so many other things now check for yourself if you feel happy every day that you are getting enough to eat once we do not have food we feel dissatisfied uncomfortable unhappy so much in distress that i do not have enough enough to eat but once we are getting enough food do we ever feel happy about it and something related to this also for example are we really aware how many pairs of clothes we have are we aware or not in fact uh, maybe with passage of time after a certain age uh, we might be aware but you'll see that in young age people are generally not aware how many pairs of clothes they have and they still keep on accumulating more and more clothes and this could be the case with a large section of society maybe you know very large section of society so once we get the physical facility we simply forget about it and start thinking about so many other things ji prema ji prema ji you have raised your hand okay your voice is not audible clearly it is fluctuating fine so give a thought to this now you can see that yes physical facility is required right for each one of us but something more is required over and above physical facility what that more is we are trying to make out so if you are accumulating more and more physical facility it is again in the domain of physical facility only what could be something else than physical facility that we require over and above it so a very pertinent question which can respond to this is here is the unhappiness in our families more due to lack of physical facility or is it more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship now here again we have to look into our family you have to reflect on your family and try to look into this whether there is unhappiness in the family or not first of all yes or no if at all then what is the major reason is it due to lack of physical facility or more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship what do you see you can respond the chat box or you can raise your hand and respond what do you see as the major reason relationship ji hiralal ji saying relationship any other response to this He is saying fulfillment in relationship. Yeah, fulfillment in relationship. Relationship. Even if it may occur to you sometimes that it is due to lack of physical facility, then you can just reflect upon it through this particular example, a very simple example. Let's say there are five people in a family, and everyone requires four units of physical facility. You can take it to be anything like food or clothes or whatever, right? and with this calculation in a day you require 20 units of that facility let's say some day there are only 18 units there are no 20 units in the family two units are less do you feel that there is going to be quarrel in the family a fight in the family or there will be harmony in the family what will result let's say the breakfast has to be prepared for five persons in the family every person requires four sandwiches Does the family requires twenty sandwiches, but there are only eighteen sandwiches, right? So, where will there be fight for food or not? Sir, harmony and concern and care for each other—that is what I feel is the harmony in the family, understanding in the family. That is how they can arrive at the decision. So, if there is harmony in the family, that is to say, if there is relationship, the feeling of relationship is there, yeah. then they will share. will feed the other first and then eat isn't it and we'll also plan that next day this should not happen you know we'll work in a way so that it doesn't happen next day but if there is no feeling of relationship and if somebody informs that two sandwiches are less today for the breakfast we'll rush to the kitchen so that the first person is me who gets the breakfast isn't it and one may also apprehend that the same situation may occur tomorrow so why not save for the next day also by storing more and more from our side now if you look at the families today and you know, this is something that we are able to see 
the problems are more due to lack of fulfillment relationship and that's how you can see that the facilities are rising if you just look at the society 50 years back and the society that is there today so many facilities have come up we were not even having landline phones 50 years back right everyone has a smartphone maybe more than one smartphones now isn't it cars were rare sight tv was a rare sight and the facilities have been going up day by day in the last 50 years you can see a complete change of the scenario in the society but still there is unhappiness in the families and you see that it may be the case that as the facilities are going up after a limit the unhappiness is also going up if you look at the courts the family courts somebody's mic is unmuted krishnan ji so it may be the case if you look at the family courts here most of the cases that are being filed are owing to the divorce cases between husband and wife or the property disputes and when they have accumulated more and more property you know so much of land and assets the strife in the family is going up <clears throat> so we can see at a personal level we can see at the societal level that the unhappiness in the families is more due to lack of relationship but we are working more and more for physical facility isn't it trying to compete with the other compare with the other let's say a family is there where both husband and wife are earning but they are trying to compete with each other so the salary in the family has gone up both are earning but the feeling of competition is not ensuring relationship not ensuring happiness in the family isn't it and if the child also starts competing with the parent then what will happen in the family and this is not a joke this is happening actually if you look at the metro city this kind of scenario is coming up so it's really something to give a serious thought to isn't it and we have to reflect at a personal level not looking at the society to begin with but we have to look in our own family what is the root cause of unhappiness in the family is it facilities or is it relationship and then again try to see how much time and effort we are investing for physical facility and how much time and effort we are investing for fulfilling our relationships it might be the case that we are spending so much of time for facilities we are busy we are getting busier day by day earlier the working hours used to be from 10 to 5 now people are working from 8 to 8 in the corporate world if you see people are working from 8 to 8 the moment they start from the home the meeting online meeting starts and then they are also in a meeting till 11 o'clock in the night isn't it the calls are there from abroad and they are busy all the time so we are investing so much of time for facilities how about the relationship so what what we are trying to do since we have missed out on the front of relationship we try to patch up we try to do some patchwork on weekends on holidays you know going to dine outside going to uh, do some merry making outside we are trying to just patch up the relationship and there also by the time we come back again there is some kind of uh, <laughs> dispute isn't it and this has become a common scenario so we'll see that there is a complete mismatch here the problem is somewhere else and we are trying to resolve it somewhere else there is a story about a professor uh, who was looking for his key one night below a street light and whosoever passed by just asked the professor what is the problem what are you doing here he said that my key has got lost so i am looking for my key here so some people joined him in that effort when half an hour had passed and still the key was not to be found then someone asked him are you really sure that the key has fallen here this professor said which is very amusing no no the key has fallen in the pond outside then one asked him that why are you looking for the key here and he says that because the light is here there is no light in the pond in a similar way our whole education has got focused on earning physical facilities getting on a good job a good package okay people are doing job hopping for better and better packages isn't it they are looking for more and more facilities and they are accumulating also indulging also but still the problems in the families are not coming down they are rather going up and we can see so much of so many examples are there in our country abroad where we can see this kind of scenario so this is something which is worth paying attention to so you'll see that the unhappiness is more due to lack of fulfillment relationship but most of the time and effort is spent for physical facility 
Are you able to see this? You can respond in the chat box. Are you able to see this? दुख जो है उस संबंध का निर्वाह न होने कारण ज्यादा है परंतु समय सुविधा के लिए ज्यादा लगाया जा रहा है एंड सोसाइटी यूनिवर्सिटी How many of you want to become a billionaire? Almost every student will say, "I want to become a billionaire." Everyone will raise hand. Then I ask the students, "Do you want to become happy?" Then again, everyone will raise hand. Yes, I want to become happy. Then I ask the third question: Are you sure that by becoming billionaire, you will be, you will be happy? And no one raises hand. One or two may raise their hands, but still, you can see that none of the students. Say that yes, I am assured that by becoming a billionaire, I am going to be happy in continuity. No one is able to assure this. No one uh, says this. So you can see the widespread notion that by accumulating more and more wealth, I will I will be happy, you know, is being spread. But when we go to verify, we do not find it valid. Still, students are having the dreams of becoming a billionaire, though they are missing the point. They are not able to investigate whether. by becoming a billionaire i will be happy and we can see in the society we can see in the families around we can see in our families you know where the problem is is it owing to the lack of physical facility or owing to the lack of relationship <laughs> so we can make out from here very simply that for human being physical facility is necessary but relationship is also necessary isn't it and on examining carefully we find that this is a fundamental difference between animals and human beings physical facility is necessary for animals and necessary for human being also however for animals physical facility necessary as well as largely adequate for human being it is necessary but not adequate so if there is a cow you provide the cow food twice a day water thrice a day provide a shade Fine, the cow is comfortable, isn't it? But how about us? If we provide our child food thrice a day, you know, uh, clothes for the body, provide a shelter to the child, is that enough? The child wants affection. The child wants care. The child wants guidance, isn't it? The child wants that commitment in the relationship. For a child, this is not enough. This is not adequate. and if you feel that it is not adequate for animals it is certainly not adequate for human beings we can reflect upon this in our own life in fact for human being if you provide the facilities but no relationship it is called a jail it is become it becomes a punishment what do we do in the jail we just put the person inside and deprive him of relationship we provide food we provide shelter we provide clothes but deprive him of relationship and becomes a punishment so this is certainly not adequate for a human being i hope we all are able to see this isn't it so for human beings physical facility necessary but relationship is also necessary and this is a contrast between animals and human beings for animals physical facility is necessary and largely adequate for human beings it is necessary but not adequate they require relationship also with human beings any comment upon this any reflection from anyone i hope you are able to see this you can respond in the chat box also are we able to see this that is both are required we cannot do with just physical facilities i'm not uh... very very true sir nice nice ma'am any other reflection on this yes i i'm not very sure about it when you see animals especially your pet animals involved if you give affection 
they are very happy along with the physical facility. Sometimes even if you give facility and if you are not paying attention, the animals also become unhappy. So I don't know whether we can completely generalize uh, uh, like this, that the, yes, it's largely adequate, but they also necessary something more sometime, I feel. Yeah, that's why we have said largely adequate. Yes. I see if that. you feel that this is not adequate for animals, certainly not for human beings. Yeah, that's true. Vandana ji? Yeah, I, I hope I'm audible. <clears throat> yeah, clearly audible. Actually, sir, a lot has been discussed, you know, the, on the time we spend in our relationship. Because nowadays, if we consider today's scenario, where both, you know, husband and wife are working, so I think we are doing a very, you know, quantitative analysis over here. I feel that because, you know, both are working and now it has become necessary also, if you see that it's not the number of hours that we spend or we give to our relationship. It is the quality time, how much quality time we are giving. Like, you know, like I said, you know, it has become necessary nowadays and everybody is working. So we cannot, you know, always calculate in terms of hours, how many hours we've given to each other or to our family or to everyone, you know, children or relatives, but how much quality time we are spending. It is not compensating, you know, our children with the gadgets and all, but how much time we spend, you know, sitting with them. Because we've been discussing over here that physical facility is required. Yes, you cannot deny that. But along with that physical facility, are we sitting to enjoy that physical facility or together also or not? How many times we are sharing a meal together? Like most of the times, you know, we don't even sit on the dining table together. So that is very, very important in the family. And, yeah. you know, and appreciating. Also... Appreciating is very, very important. How much appreciation we have for each other. That sense of gratitude. So I feel that lack of gratitude and lack of appreciation. Yeah, Vanna ji got muted. Yeah, I got your point. So nice. When, when you say quality time with the family, that essentially means that we are addressing the relationship. When yes. we talk about gratitude, we talk about appreciation, we talk about affection. You know? Yeah. We talk about trust, mutual respect. Yes. So this is something that we have got to address. And many times we are missing it out. Maybe yes. when we are spending time together, we are sitting in the front of a television, yes. isn't it? And Busy on mobiles the, nowadays. <laughs> yeah, and talking about the things that are being shown in the television, maybe news or some serial or something. So we are not talking about each other. We just try to make out how many times in a family, how many times in a week we sit together in a family and share our feeling for each other. Yes, sir. that's very other. important. That's very I would important. just like to make a very, very brief point. Sansarik yes. or sanskarik. If we are if we are using our time with the family for sansaric pleasures, material pleasures, or if we are using our quality time with the family for sanskaric time pass, which means that we are teaching them morality and ethics and everything else, are we taking them out to a seven-star hotel and a swimming pool and having good time with them? Or are we teaching them values for better living. That, that qualitative aspect of what kind of time we spend with the children is what is important. Nice, nice myself, I, I grew up in a joint family and I spent very little time with my father. But I got my son's karik values from my grandfather, my grandparents, my uncles, my cousins and everybody else. Now my son, we are in, we are a nuclear family. My son and his children, child stayed away from us. And the amount of time my son spends with his daughter is far, far, far more in terms of quantity and quality than I spent with my father. So it's, it's a choice that we make. It's a choice that we have. As long as we are able to fulfill our balance of sansarikta or san Samskarikta, it makes a big difference. Nice, nice. In fact, we can have some more response in the chat box. 
so uh, those who are not able to raise their hand or uh, share their views here can respond the chat box because ultimately we are in a process of dialogue here isn't it it is, it is something that we have to look into within oneself in our own family and then respond ji prema ji prema ji you are muted prema raghavan ji Uh, you are saying something maybe but you are muted uh again you are muted <laughs> fine fine let me proceed then see you are unmuted now Okay, there is some problem with your mic i think okay let me proceed so we are able to see that yes relationship is also necessary isn't it now we see that even though we accept that yes relationship is necessary we do get into arguments we get into opposition fight sometimes isn't it in the family with close friends with colleagues at work in the marketplace and when we sit together we talk about uh, the Uh, acts by others which have been displeasing to us we have grudges we have complaints many times when we are interacting with those who with whom we have complaints we do get into opposition and fights and whenever we have a fight we want to resolve it we say sorry we patch up we promise not to not to fight in future and so many things but even though we don't want to a fight does take place once again why does it happen we want the other to improve and the other wants us to improve why does it happen is this happening or not try to find out is this happening or not are incidences of reaction not speaking to the other arguments debates divorces are they increasing or decreasing yes and sir try to exactly. explore yeah try to explore your close relationships in the family with friends in the workplace in the society does it happen or not you can respond the chat box chat box also are you able to see this happening can we see this in our family in our own relationships yes sir ji sujata ji has raised hand now sharda ji sujata ji so it is tremendously increasing nowadays rinku ji yeah pardon say it again it is tremendously increasing nowadays yeah tremendously increasing nowadays yeah yes. people don't yes. either they don't want to get married or if they are married they get uh, divorced uh, very quickly you know very early yeah true true ma'am sujata ji so it's bound to happen as long as there are differences of opinion and is that true we, do we, we have to, we just need yeah. to see that the uh, dining table conversation i mean the dining uh, table uh, does not become a site of conflict <laughs> I mean, yes uh, we, we we need to see how we can resolve those conflicts through uh, healthy discussions rather than trying to argue uh, one out of whatever yes yes So, so you is, see that it's not the difference of opinion that matters. See, we can have a difference of opinion, but that does not actually lead to bitterness. Bitterness is something else. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So no, so we should be able to also respect the other people's uh, difference of opinion, and be able to see. Uh, I mean, bring about a balance in whatever uh, we are debating about. Uh, I mean, there there are times when we. agree to disagree but nevertheless we need to see how uh, we can resolve those conflicts so that uh, yes, there is yes. peace and harmony yes i'll come to that what could be the source of that yes vandana ji so i feel that basically it happens you know because we don't want to listen nowadays mm -hmm. having difference of opinion is not at all a problem we all are different individuals and we'll have different opinions but the problem comes when like you know you it's there on the screen also not speaking to the other we are argumenting 
the problem is that we all want to speak speak and speak but we don't want to listen we don't show respect to others opinion so there comes the conflict and then you know comes all these problems so basically the problem is that we don't want to listen to others we just want to put forth our opinion every time and we see that the more so called education is going up the tendency to listen to others is coming down isn't it coming down yes sir Yes. 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 Definitely. Yes. Very nice. So the moot so question is again, again that we put values from the very beginning, from the school, from the family, into the children. Yeah, yeah. In fact, sir, you see that to put it in the school, we need such teachers also who yes. are having. Certainly. Understanding. Sir. Yes. So that's why we are intervening in technical higher education first, because from there only we will getting the teachers of tomorrow. But yes, we have to ultimately go into primary education also. Yes, very, very true. Ha. So we'll see that. Sir, sir, may I? Ji. Half the time, if we are willing to uh, efface our ego and are able to um, try and listen to others, I guess we win the argument without arguing. In fact, it's not the question of winning argument. It's the question of getting to the right, right conclusion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Both so, of us may be wrong and together we may reach the right conclusion, isn't it? Uh, possible, possible. But yes. as long as we are able to reach that, uh, you know, Understanding. proper conclusion, uh, yes. I guess that's a good start to resolve the conflict. Ji, certainly. You we'll see that in spite of our acceptance of relationship, you know, it is still happening. And why is it happening? So we'll see that you know, there could be certain perspectives about relationship. Like when you start questioning ourselves, we can see, we can ask these three questions. So the first question could be, I want to live in relationship with others. Let us find it out. Is it true or not? The second question would be, I want to live in opposition with others. Is it true or not? And the third could be that we are conditioned to think in a particular manner. Let's say we believe that living has to be necessarily in opposition with others. That is a struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive. And then check whether we feel happy living this way. Now, as I questioned you earlier also, and everybody said yes to this. So we want to live in relations with others. We do not get, uh, we do not want to get into opposition with others. But still, we might be having so many conditioning, so many assumptions within us through education, which has come through formal education or my surroundings or from parents or from certain stories that I have heard of. And we are conditioned to think in a particular manner. Right. So like there is struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive. Or there could be some saying like Sathe Satyam Samacharet. So we can be conditioned to think in a particular manner. And then we we'll see that even though we want to be in, a, in relationship with others, we get into a position with others. This is come called as preconditioning, our assumptions, our false assumptions, which are, which we have not verified, isn't it? So just try to see what is our present perspective, which view do we promote at home, in the family, in the schools and colleges, in the society? And whatever we are promoting, is it naturally acceptable to us? Have we verified this? Or are we just going by those assumptions, those preconditionings? And the parents are nurturing those conditionings in their children. The children are nurturing in their friends, right? The teachers are also preconditioned. And they are also trying to condition their students in a similar manner. So even though we want to have a feeling of relationship, and that also with everyone, if you verify it, we get into a position because we are preconditioned in multiple ways. And the education may be supporting these conditionings. One very common preconditioning, if you see in the society today, that money is everything. Nobody is trustworthy in the society. And we are assuming this. We are taking it for granted that, yes, this is very much true. Tit for tat. So even though we want to have the feeling of relationship, owing to these kinds of deep sanskars in us, deep conditionings in us, we tend to get into a position with others and then we it may go to any level. So we'll see through some exploration that right understanding is also essential for a human being. 
so this is another thing which is required for me for everyone else as a human being so for fulfilling relationship necessary to have right understanding about relationship because with right understanding only i am able to make out you know what relationship means i am able to have the clarity of relations with human being we are able to fulfill the relationship and we also have the clarity about how much physical facility we need in fact what we were asking earlier so people are going for accumulation of more and more physical facility because they are not able to make out the limit of need for physical facility how much facilities are required they are not able to make out and that's how even though they accept naturally to be in a relationship to fulfill the relationship they are not able to fulfill because they don't have time so <coughs> with right understanding we get the clarity about both we have the clarity about the feelings in the relationship which can be mutually fulfilling and we also have the clarity about the physical facilities that we need with the right quantity so as a human being we can see that there are three things which are required right understanding relationship and physical facility just try to make out for yourself are all the three required or something here is redundant you can remove it also try to make out if all the three are ensured do we require something else something over and above this what do you feel you can share your views here in the chat box or you can raise your hand and share your opinion on this is something redundant here can we go without right understanding can we go without relationship can we go without physical facility and if in your life all the three are ensured what else would you require is there something over and above this that you require you can raise your hand and respond and whether we are working for all the three what do you feel and if all three are required then what would be the priority priority means that if i work on the higher priority it facilitates the realization of the lower priority so what would the priority what would come at the spirituality yeah. has has to be added yeah so when you say spirituality basically it uh, is a word associated with spirit yeah uh, and i'll come to that spirit so spirit means basically the self so i need to have understanding of the self isn't it i need to have right understanding about the existence so the essence of spirituality is the knowledge of the whole existence that is the essence and that is essentially to do with right understanding continuous introspection so continuous introspection is the process what i achieve is right understanding hiralaji is that fine yes that can be part but spirituality so what do you is think... a broader term pardon spirituality is it not it's it's at a broader perspective so is it something to be with... ji so essentially if you see you no know, when you talk about spirituality also you are trying to address the need for right understanding about the whole that's a part of it yes certainly yeah yeah about the whole not the part only about Anji. the whole ji so what do you think is the first priority in our life right understanding relationship or physical facility what would come at the first priority relationship relationship okay but when you say that spirituality is a need okay then that what would, do you feel that that would the... be a part of that that has to be part that has to be value input into the whole system mhm mm so relationship would ensure right understanding or right understanding would ensure relationship what do you feel right understanding is more important right understanding is more important ji prem ji is saying right understanding is more important others can also share their opinion what would come at the first priority you can simply uh, unmute yourself ji vanna right ji right understanding sir right understanding a little bit of exploration will show that right understanding comes at the first priority when i have the right understanding of myself of the other then i am able to ensure the right feeling in me like trust respect affection care love and with that i am able to fulfill the relationship so when i have the right understanding in me for each and everything for myself for the other for the rest of nature then i am able to fulfill the other also so with the right understanding of relationship i am able to fulfill the relationship which ensures mutual happiness 
Now you see in the families, what is happening? The mutual happiness is not ensured. Why? Because the right feeling is not ensured. Why? Because the right understanding is not ensured. Similarly, when you talk about the physical facility, when I go to make out the need for physical facility, how much I require, how many houses I require, how much of food I require, how many clothes I require, how many gadgets I require, how do I make out? If I try to fetch happiness, if I try to fetch respect from facilities, I can never make out the need. But if I try to verify the need for physical facility with the right understanding of human being, then I can exactly make out how much I require, isn't it? I can also understand how will I fulfill it? Will I deplete the nature in the process? Will I exploit other human beings in the process? Or I will work for prosperity on either side, fulfilling my family as well as fulfilling the rest of nature also. Try to make it out. Try to respond to the chat box also. I'm not able to get in dialogue with many of us because either you're not unmuting yourself or not sharing on the chat box. See, this whole exercise is to initiate that dialogue. I hope we are in dialogue. I'm not able to see you. So you can respond in the chat box also. So as a human being, if you see, this is something that comes as my priority when I reflect within myself, when I investigate within myself. If I miss out on the front of right understanding, and I, then I miss out the relationship also. And then if I'm working only for physical facility, what will result? I will be unhappy within because I'm not having understanding within. I'm in turmoil, I'm in uh, distress, I'm uncomfortable, I'm tense, I'm, I'm stressed. So I'm not happy within. And when I'm interacting with others in the family, I'm reacting, I'm shouting, I'm you know, uh, not responding properly, not behaving responsibly. So what will happen? There will be mutual unhappiness. Being ha unhappy within while making others unhappy. And you see that, yeah, Sushil Bhaiya, you are messaging to me uh, in place of messaging to all. <laughs> so maybe you are trying to message to all, but your messages are coming to me only. So you see that if I do not ensure at standing within, then I miss out my fulfillment in relationship also. So I'm unhappy within and making others unhappy. At the same time, I'm not able to make out the need for physical facility rightly. So I feel deprived within. I feel that I do not have enough. And then to feel fulfilled, I exploit other human beings. I exploit the rest of nature. So when I'm able to ensure all the three, then only I'm living like a human being. I am living with human consciousness. So if we are living with all the three, that is right understanding, relationship, and physical facility with the correct priority, then we are living with human consciousness because then only we can have fulfillment in life. We can have a fulfilling life. On the other side, if I only work for physical facility, okay, I am unclear about relationship. I have doubts and confusions and contradictions within me. Even though I may be a billionaire, I'm unhappy within, I'm making others unhappy. I'm depriving myself, I'm depriving others also. And I'm living with animal consciousness. So this is animal consciousness. Now you see that animals living with animal consciousness are in harmony, fine. Human being living with human consciousness is in harmony, this is fine. But human being living with animal consciousness is the actual problem. Then people are in disharmony, I'm in disharmony, you are in disharmony because if I'm not able to ensure human consciousness in my life, I'm in problem. I'm in trouble, isn't it? And then the wealth doesn't matter. What matters essentially is harmony in my life, isn't it? This is something that we can make out as a key takeaway of this session, that are we able to ensure harmony in our life? Is the education able to ensure harmony in the life of students? So you'll see that presently there are two kinds of people on this planet. One who are lacking physical facility and they are feeling unhappy and deprived. The other set of people is who are having physical facility still unhappy and deprived. So the current education at the most can bring some of the people, not all, from state one to state two. But the common denominator is, is unhappiness and deprivation. And that's how we fail to fulfill the basic aspiration. Even though we have accomplished so much in terms of technology, in terms of gadgets, in terms of technologies, you know, uh, devices, 
right? But still, we are missing the point. We are not able to ensure happiness in the society. We are not able to ensure feeling of prosperity in the society. So, though we want to be happy and prosperous with you know, physical facilities, want to have the physical facilities, at the same time, want to be happy and prosperous, miss it out. And we have to make out where we are right now, at one, two, or three, and where do we want to be. I hope you are able to see that you want to be at three and not one and two, isn't it? With the effort meant only for physical facilities, we can at the most move from one to two, isn't it? But what we essentially want is three. And if the happiness is ensured, prosperity is ensured, okay? So we can see that there is a limitation of physical facility as a need. And beyond that, it is actually not my need. Why will I spend my time, you know? Be just a vestige of time. I will spend that time for fulfilling my relationships, for ensuring the right understanding in the other. Think about it. You know, it's something to be given a serious thought to. If you look at the data, it suggests that the global food production is six times the requirement. This is something that we got from a UN back report from 2011. The global food production is six times the requirement, and the food wastage is one third of the population. So the vestige is enough to feed 1,300 crore people. At that time, let's say if the population of the world was something around 650 crores, okay, then twice the population on this earth can be fed with the amount of food that is being wasted. So we can see that this is not the question of production. It is not the question of you know, producing more and more, but rather this is a question of distribution. And the question of distribution is related to the field of relationship, which can be addressed through right understanding, which can be addressed through education. And the education enables you to make out the need to rightly utilize the facility that we have. So when the people are dying of hunger, it is not because of lack of food, it is because of lack of relationship. We are depriving the society. We are accumulating, indulging, and some part of the society not able to feed itself. So there is a need for transformation. Now, when you talk about development, it cannot be just in terms of increasing the physical facilities. We are able to see that facilities may be enough. If you look at the food that is being produced, which is much more than required. If you look at the clothes that are being produced, a single country is able to manufacture the clothes for almost the whole of population on this planet today, isn't it? So the clothes may be much more than required. So essentially, we do not have to focus on physical facilities. We have to focus on something else. We have to focus on this transformation. Then only we can progress as a society. Then only we can develop as a society. Just adding to this small circle of physical facilities will not be enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> So just try to look at this. If the right understanding is missing, relationship is missing, and we are just adding up physical facilities, we are not able to develop as a society. What is required essentially is this transformation. Then only we can have mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. Then only we can develop as a human society. So let us find out whether we are making effort for this or not. And do we need to make effort for this or not? So we'll explore a little further. And in fact, in the whole workshop, when we have the full eight day workshop or six day workshop, we try to explore into every you know, facet of this transformation, every bit and piece of this transformation. What does right understanding mean? What does right feeling the relationship mean? How can we make out with definiteness the need for physical facility? How can we ensure the fulfillment of physical facility? fulfilling the rest of nature, things like this. So this requires some time. We have limited time here in this online session, particularly. And in this online session, it may be the case that we are also maybe uh, in gross with certain other things. So it was just meant to draw your attention to this. But as we go along, as we have the full face-to-face -face workshop, this may be more clear to you. So the holistic development is essentially the transformation to this level of consciousness, the human consciousness. 
and the role of education is to enable this transformation by ensuring the development of the competence that is the development of human consciousness so that one is able to live with definite human conduct and for this we have to ensure the right understanding in every child the capacity to live in relations with every other human being and also the capacity to identify the need for physical facility when we have this then we can also develop the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required you see we are talking so much about sustainability okay now to have sustainable growth sustainable development we are again trying to work on technologies it is just like looking at the ring below the street light while the ring has fallen in the pond the problem is that we are not able to develop the right understanding in child we are not able to develop the capacity to live with relationship in the child and we are trying to work out the programs of sustainability only by working for physical facilities through innovation through you know uh, certain uh, technological advancement now if you see we move from uh, coal to diesel to petrol and now we are coming to electric cars but if you are not able to make out how many cars we require why do i need to move in a car at all again there would be shortage of lithium in this planet so the petroleum has got used up and now the lithium will get used up then something else will come so the sustainability can never be addressed in completeness if we miss out the right understanding part now what is happening today if you look at the current state of education we are not able to develop the right understanding so this is missing the feeling of relationship is also not being addressed there is not a single course if you see right from childhood to uh, higher education where we are talking about relationship particularly with clarity that yes this is what relationship means these are the feelings which are acceptable to each one of us in the relationship so we are missing out on the front of relationship also the identification of the need for facilities is also missing the willingness to produce by way of labor is also missing in fact the more and more education is going up people are getting used to go for only white collar jobs and no blue collar jobs or no no such job where we have to make our hands dirty we just have to put our hands in the pocket yeah we just have to put our hands in the pocket and command others this right realization is also largely missing and the core feeling that is generated is to accumulate more and more to consume more and more rather than to produce more and more. produce what is required and to utilize it rightly any opinion on this are you able to see this is this happening or not what do you think yeah. can respond skill development is happening skill development is happening yeah skill development is happening and this part is missing and that's how the tendency is to accumulate more and more consume more and more so these problems essentially are an indication of the lack of effort for holistic development and most of the problems we see around us are really only the symptoms of human being who are not living with human consciousness so the basic effort is required to ensure human consciousness through human education when we have the human education in place then we can develop the children you know with human consciousness who are able to contemplate upon the human values and live with human conduct that will ensure the right kind of character in our children so that we can enable a humane society generation by generation isn't it so this will result in human tradition where the human goal is fulfilled generation after generation are you able to see this are you able to see the need for this any opinion on this very much needed sir human value is very much needed ji ji any other comment excellent we need to go for cj courses nice nice so uh, in fact when we sit face to face and interact for at least 3 days then only we can elaborate on each of these because when we talk about right understanding again we have to enter into that dialogue so that we can question our beliefs we can question our thoughts we can question our living and then we are one at the level of introspection at the level of exploration so this is the outcome of education sanskar so through education sanskar when it is human we are able to ensure the understanding of harmony at every level of living and one way of putting it would be there are four levels of living 
one at the individual level. So harmony in the human being has to be understood. The next level of our living is family, then society, and then nature existence. And when we enable the right understanding at every level, then we are able to live in harmony at every level. So in this process, we require skills. For example, when I'm talking to you, I want, I need to learn some skills to be able to communicate with you. I need to learn the skills to make this presentation, isn't it? But the essence is the content to be shared, either through language or through this presentation. So the skills uh, help us to live with harmony. But the, at the base is the understanding of harmony. And when the education becomes a process of ensuring this, okay, then only the education can be called as humane. Just imbibing skills and not able to focus the need for right understanding may be misleading. You just see the games that are being designed today. The games have become a kind of gamble. And uh, it is going up. The business is going up. It is being said that by 2030, the business is going to be a trillions of dollars. And our children are getting caught up. They are spending so much of time there, missing out on part of their health, their relationship, their responsibility in the society, just engrossed with gadgets. And what kind of society we are entering in if you are not able to address this particular need for education. So essentially, we want education to enable human beings who are able to live with mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. And once this becomes a trend in the society, generation by generation, we are able to have harmonious living. And sir, we can please add, about... sir, please add one. How to ensure this happening? Yeah, so the process is the education sanskar. In fact, uh, in the education sanskar process, if you are able to take the right understanding at the first priority and not the skills, not the lessons about physical facilities, then only it can be addressed. So this is the, yeah, this is the complete content of uh, the workshop. So essentially, education means the understanding part. And when you talk about understanding, we have to understand every aspect of life, every reality of this existence. We have to talk about human being, we have to talk about family, we have to talk about society, nature, existence. And then sanskar becomes my living. How I fulfill the relationship, how I fulfill the need for physical facility. So that every time I'm able to, I'm able to ensure mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. If you extend this, this competence to live with human consciousness enables the competence in me to ensure justice in all my relationships. And then I'm able to see that the relationship is very much there with every human being. So I'm able to see the whole world as my family. I'm not limited to only three or four people in the family. With that short vision for family, I'm able to move to the larger perspective where I'm, I'm able to see the whole humanity as my family. This is Vasudev quite possible. Kutumbakam. Pardon? Vasudev Kutumbakam. Yes, yeah, Vasudev Kutumbakam. In fact, in our tradition also, we have always talked about Vasudev Kutumbakam. You know, we are not trying to make ourselves supreme. Rather, we are trying to relate to every human being. So, with this competence, I become a pillar of undivided society. Similarly, when I'm able to make out the need for facilities rightly in my family, I'm able to ensure orderliness in my family, and then I'm able to participate in the world family order. So this competence to live with mutual prosperity enables me to ensure universal human order, orderliness in the whole of society, across the humanity. This is the actual meaning of human consciousness. And this is quite possible, but at the core is the right process of education. These are the societal implications when we start inculcating these values in our children through right education. So essentially what we have done, we have put forward the proposals here. And this is what we do in the workshop in a little more uh, detail at length we do. So we talk about harmony in the human way. So if you look at the three day workshop, uh, on the first day we have the introduction and then we talk about briefly about the harmony in the human being. On the second day, we talk about harmony in the human being in little more detail. We talk about the self, and then we talk about values of trust and respect in the society, in the family. On the third day, we talk about other feelings in the relationship, and then we talk about society, nature, and existence. So three day, uh, the duration is little 
compact so we are not able to detail much upon the feelings or society and nature but essentially when we have the complete eight day workshop then we are able to discuss all this at ease we also have group discussion where you can be there and share your own views on each of these and then we can be more uh, interactive in our discussion so the process essentially is self exploration self verification and the desired achievement is that at an as an individual i am able to transform myself see the societal transformation can never happen without individual transformation once i am resolved then only i can resolve the other once i am having the right understanding then only i can talk about right understanding i can ensure the right understanding in the other isn't it so my living with happiness and prosperity becomes a motivation for us and then only i am able to enable the societal transformation so this is the process that we are trying to discuss about but to reiterate again whatever i have said from my side is a proposal no need to assume it as true or false but rather verify on your own right and we have to keep on addressing this innate faculty in each one of us the natural acceptance dialogue that we have begun but soon it is going to take the shape of a dialogue within your own self and you are able to address these two realities what you are and what you really want to be so this was all from my side as a proposal for each one of us to investigate so i stop here and then we can have reflections from you and then we can have you know maybe it is time for break also as it was mentioned earlier rajul bhaiya please let me know if any question is there i can take up Uh, very nice, Kumar. Uh, it's been such a <laughs> uh, good journey. Uh, we have ten minutes of break, a bio break. Uh, anybody who would like to uh, take a break, they are welcome. But uh, I would request Kumar if you can continue with question answer. Uh, that would be very nice. Um, yeah, I am available. Yeah. So if anyone has any kind of question, please do share. Yeah. 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 i think the chat currently allows direct message to only three co host as an admin if you can allow chat to everybody they will be able to send uh, okay, yeah, I'll, i'll take a look at that i'll take a look at that thank you yeah meantime uh, <clears throat> if there are any Uh, questions or observations yeah. and comments you can take yeah. that or you can uh, switch on your video and stop the this uh, ppt so you can see each other as you are talking okay bhaiya yeah. anirudh ji has a question the proposed uh, workshops are of what duration sir hello ji hello am i audible sir you are audible the proposed workshop of timing i am asking the duration sir we have uh, the introductory workshop minimum of 3 days so in those 3 days uh, so each 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 one the time duration yeah the details are here which rajul bhai has shared okay <coughs> एवरीवे <coughs> जो मेरे व्यू ये है कि जब तक हम एक दूसरे के पॉइंट से एग्री करते हैं तो कोई सब ठीक रहता है प्रॉब्लम वहां से स्टार्ट होती है व्हेन वी नॉट एग्री विद द अदर पर्सन दिन में हर एक में तीन चार बारी ऐसी मोमेंट आ जाती है कि फैमिली में या कहीं पर भी हम एग्री नहीं करते हैं तो वहां से प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट होना चालू कर जाता है अगर वहीं पर जैसे एग्री हमें पता लग जाता है कि ये इस पॉइंट में एग्री नहीं कर रहे हैं सपोज घर में एक पर्सन कहता है कि मुझे एक्स डायरेक्शन में जाना है दूसरा कहता है वाई डायरेक्शन में जाना है एक कहता है बाहर जाना है दूसरा कहता है नहीं घर पर टीवी देखना है सिंपल सी इस पर ही कई बार कंफ्लिक्ट चालू हो जाता है तो उसका सोल्यूशन जो है फर्स्ट इसमें तीन चार में मैंने मेरे आइडियाज हैं पहला सोल्यूशन तो यही है कि डिस्कशन 
एक प्रॉपर डिस्कशन करके काम वे में डिस्कशन करके फिफ्टी परसेंट सोल्व सोल्यूशन वही सोल्व हो जाती है आदमी एक दूसरे की हारमोनी में आ जाता है व्यूज मिल जाते हैं और वन कैन गो हैड सेकेंड में है कि जो जिसे हम कहते हैं विन विन सिचुएशन जब सर रुक जाते हैं यहाँ पे जी थोड़ा सा आपने चर्चा मिस कर दिया तो जो बेसिक इशू है वो सहमत या असहमत होना नहीं है अच्छा जी बेसिक इशू ये है कि हम अपनी सहज स्वीकृति को देख पाए तो हाँ जी ऐसा हो सकता है किसी गलत बात पे भी और उसे समस्या उस समय नहीं दिखाई देगी बट आगे चलकर दिखाई देगी ऐसा भी हो सकता है की दो लोग असहमत है बट एक उनमें से ऐसी बात कह रहा है जो सहज उससे स्वीकार है तो वो असहमति हमें सही दिशा में ले जाएगा तो मुद्दा बेसिकली सहमति या सहमति का नहीं है सही को देख पाने का है हमें सहज रूप से क्या स्वीकार है इसको देख पाने का है हाँ ठीक है सर सही देखने के लिए मैं एग्री कर चलो आप सही देखना है सही सही देखने का अगर मैं इसको थोड़ा सा और एलोब्रेट कर लेता हूँ सही देखने का मेरा अपना विचार है कि हर इंसान ये सोचता है कि मैं ठीक हूँ मैं सही हूँ कोई भी ये नहीं कहता मैं गलत हूँ जिससे भी बात करोगे वो सही है बट अच्छा रुक जाते हैं मैं थोड़ा सा इसलिए रिस्पॉन्ड कर दे रहा हूँ तो मुख्य बात मिस हो जाएगी देखिए हम मानने और जानने में अंतर करना जरूरी है क्योंकि हम मान लेते हैं कि हम सही हैं बट यदि हम अपने आप से पूछें जो हम लोग दूसरे तीसरे स्लाइड में पूछ रहे थे कि मैं जैसा हूं और जैसा होना मुझे सहज रूप से स्वीकार है ये दोनों एक हैं क्या तो दिखता है कि नहीं एक नहीं है है ना तो जैसा मैं हूं वो ऐसा हो सकता है मेरी सहज स्वीकृति नहीं है फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेरे अंदर विरोध के भाव है दूसरे के प्रति अब मैं जितना भी जस्टिफाई करूं जब मैं अपने आप से पूछता हूं कि मुझे सहज से क्या स्वीकार विरोध का भाव या संबंध का भाव तो उत्तर मिलता है संबंध का भाव अगर इस प्रोसेस को इनेबल करें तो हर व्यक्ति अपने आप में जांच परख से तय कर सकता है कि मैं सही हूं कि नहीं तो मुद्दा सही मानने का नहीं मानने का नहीं है मुद्दा सही को देख पाने का है और हम जब डायलॉग भी कर रहे हैं तो अपने आप में डायलॉग का चलना जरूरी है जैसे अगर हमारे अंदर डायलॉग ही ना हो कि मेरी सहज स्वीकृति क्या है और फिर मैं दूसरे डायलॉग करने जाता हूँ डिबेट का रूप ले लेता है यही हो रहा है परिवारों में संस्थाओं में समाज में कि हम डिबेट करने लगते हैं आप पैनल डिस्कशन में देखिए इतना हीटेड डिबेट चल रहा होता है आप किसी पूछ लीजिए आपको सहज रूप से क्या स्वीकार है संबंध का भाव या विरोध का भाव सब कहेंगे संबंध का भाव जबकि विरोध के भाव को लेकर हम महीनों महीनों डिबेट करते हैं ये एक बेसिक इश्यू है जिसमें मैं ध्यान खींचना चाह रहा था सर आप ठीक कह रहे हो मेरा सोचना यह था कि अब विरोध जो है जो अंदर है जो अंदर रहता है उसको कैसे खत्म किया जाए यही इशू है ना जी तो विरोध कैसे खत्म किया जाए इसके लिए जरूरी है कि संबंध को समझा जाए इन सारे मुद्दा विरोध को खत्म करने का नहीं है उसी के लिए मैं कह रहा हूँ जो अंदर भी अप, अपने विरोध को समझने के लिए इसका मतलब हमारे अंदर विरोध है हम एग्री नहीं कर रहे हैं तो उस अप, वंस अंदर से हम एक बात हमारे अंदर दो बातें आ रही है विरोध भी आ रहा है तो कहीं ना कहीं कंफ्लिक्ट है उस कंफ्लिक्ट को भी हम अंदर से अपने आपस में बैठ आराम से उसको एग्री करेंगे अपने आप से डिस्कस करेंगे तो काफी प्रॉब्लम सोल्व हो जाती है नंबर वन नंबर सेकंड एक जो मैं पोजीशन कह रहा था विन टू विन मैं अंदर की बात कर रहा हूँ बाहर की नहीं बात कर रहा हूँ विन टू विन सिचुएशन जिसमें भी दोनों वहां डिसीजन हमें क्या लेना है कि दोनों को विन विन करना है ठीक है जी तीसरी बात जो है थोड़ी हायर लेवल की बात है जहां पर जो क्या होता है कि एक व्यूज को एट द कोस्ट ऑफ वन व्यू हमें दूसरे व्यूज को मान लेना है राइट right? जैसे कि अपना थोड़ा सा अपना टाइम वेस्ट हो जाए अपनी कोस्ट वेस्ट हो जाए अपने दूसरे का फायदा हो जाए इसको मैं हायर लेवल में लेकर जाता हूँ बहुत हायर लेवल में लेकर जाता हूँ जैसे भगत सिंह का एग्जांपल है उसने कंट्री के लिए अपनी जान दे दी मैं आ, थोड़ा सा मैं ऐसा कहूंगा इफ यू कम फॉर द फुल थ्री डे वर्कशॉप तो इसको ज्यादा ठीक से क्योंकि अभी हम लोग जिन निष्कर्ष में पहुंच चुके हैं उससे थोड़ा मिसलीडिंग हो जाएगा तो अगर आप पूरे तीन दिन के समय लगाए और लंबा लगा सके आठ दिन का बहुत अच्छा रहेगा तो इन मुद्दों पर विस्तार से बात करेंगे ठीक है बस मेरा ये तीन पॉइंट ही थे चौथा पॉइंट ये है कि जो सब कहते हैं करो सुनो सबकी करो मन की नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम वी हैव टू लिव हैप्पी हारमोनी ओके ओके सर कोई और कुछ शेयर करना चाहे या कोई प्रश्न हो अभी तक जितनी चर्चा हुई इफ यू हैव एनी अदर क्वेश्चन देन यू कैन पुट अप दो यू हैव नॉट शेयर्ड और रेज्ड एनी क्वेश्चन सो फार आर मोस्ट वेलकम वी कैन आल्सो कॉल यू बाय नेम्स इफ रिक्वायर्ड Any reflection from your side? <coughs> ji, Ekta ji, want to say something? You are muted. No, sir, nothing. Okay, okay, nice. Can you share your takeaway from the session that we had?
I may also I may also suggest that uh, we have the FR on B website, and people who have certain questions, certain views, and any suggestions about this workshop can uh, write to us. We can also forward it to you, and then we can have the dialogue process to continue for some more time if people want to have it. If they are hesitant to today raise questions or participate, there is a way by email. Thank you. Ji, Anirudh Ji. Sir, I have a happiness that I have some views that I want to share here. But I just wanted to tell you in the short time that I have seen तीन चार पॉइंट है जो जरूरी है हैप्पीनेस रिलेशनशिप अपने कैरियर के लिए हर चीज के लिए पहला तो यह है कि अपनी हेल्थ के लिए है अपनी हेल्थ ठीक होनी चाहिए सेकंड जो है कि हमें हम जो भी काम कर रहे हैं जो भी हमारा जॉब है वो है उस पर पूरा ध्यान देना है और उसमें जो है दो बातों का ध्यान रखना है एक तो फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग जरूर होनी चाहिए फ्यूचर के लिए जिसमें कि आप बड़े क्लियर होना चाहिए कि आपकी 100 साल की 100 साल तक कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आनी चाहिए फाइनेंशियल की वो आपने जितनी जल्दी से 30 साल की उम्र में एडजस्ट कर लो तो बहुत अच्छा है प्लानिंग बना लो दूसरा बस जस्ट मैं टेक 2 मिनट 1 मिनट दूसरा पॉइंट ये है कि हर एक के अपने मेजर एम जो है वो हमें क्लियर नहीं होते लाइफ को ऐसे चलती रहती है जितनी जल्दी अपने मेजर एम्स क्लियर कर लें उतना अच्छा है उसमें भी दो टाइप के एम है मेजर एंड माइनर मेजर पर कोशिश ये करो कि उसी के उसी में डटे रहो उसको कंप्रोमाइज मत करो चाहे अपना पार्टनर ढूंढना हो चाहे अपना फ्रेंड ढूंढना हो ऑफिस में तीसरा पॉइंट जो मेरा है कि मेडिटेशंस डिवाइन अपने हर एक ऑल आर डिवाइन पर्संस अपने अंदर उस डिवाइन को पहचानने की कोशिश करो वो आप 15 मिनट देते हो 10 मिनट देते हो देना जरूर चाहिए उससे आपको और बातों से ये डिसहार्मनी और रिलेशन इससे थोड़ा थोड़ा छुटकारा मिलना चालू हो जाएगा चौथा ये है पॉइंट लास्ट पॉइंट कि थोड़ा सा मैं थोड़ा सा फिर इंटरवीन करूंगा देखिए हमने शुरू में ही कहा था इट इज नॉट अ सेट ऑफ डूज एंड डोंट्स जो हम लोग सेशन लेके चल रहे हैं इसमें कोई प्रिस्क्रिप्शन नहीं है एंड व्हाट यू आर शेयरिंग हियर इज अ सेट ऑफ डूज एंड डोंट्स सो आई थिंक वी आर टू कीप इट चलो मैं जब कर रहा हूं तो मैं अपना लास्ट पॉइंट भी शेयर कर लेता हूं कि जो हर लोग डिवाइन है तो जब हर लोग डिवाइन है तो हम हम अपने आप में दूसरी की डिवाइन को भी पहचानना चालू कर दें दूसरी की डिवाइन को इग्नोरेज करना चालू कर दें उसको हम रियलाइज करना चालू कर दें तो जब हम दूसरे में भी डिवाइन को रियलाइज करेंगे तो आपस के रिलेशन और अच्छे हो जाएंगे दैट्स ऑल ओके थैंक यू सर नाइस लेट मी से कि बहुत सारे मैसेजेस मुझे पर्सनली आ रहे हैं जो शायद इंटेंडेड है कि वो पूरे ग्रुप को पहुंचे जैसे भी सुब्रमण्यम जी का आया है एंड ईमेल योर फीडबैक ऑफ द वर्कशॉप एट दिस ईमेल आईडी frnvindia@gmail.com बट वो मुझे आ गया है इसको अगर आप चाहें तो पूरे ग्रुप को भेज सकते हैं वो ऑप्शन ऑप्शन अवेलेबल नहीं है कुमार वो It is built in now. Swastika ji has raised hand. So Rahul bhaiya, please see to this. So I am stopping from my side now. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, very uh, nice thoughts you have. Uh, the perspectives what you have given, we have learnt a lot. Uh, my view regarding uh, the content is. that as uh, previously also i discussed with you regarding the state of mind and really for happiness we need to have positive feelings about ourselves and to connect with the world also we need to be authentic in our belief values and principles we need to be committed as you said the personal the relationship the with the family the and also the last one is that we need to sustain this also we find we need to sustain our health and wellness which is also a person pursuing of the abundance of health in mind spirit and body and that from my view point is the perfect uh, uh, definition of prosperity 
ji ji in fact when you come for the full workshop ma'am then we can discuss all these issues at length so your intention is fine what you trying what you are trying to say but to understand all these issues we need some more time to be able to explore it yes yeah very nice uh, ragnathan ji shall we move to the next session yes then? yes please please so this is rajul asthana i am going to go into sharing some of the efforts about uh, this topic that we have been talking about so far we have had a very interesting discussion uh, in the morning now we will see whether you know what are the things that have been done so far and then at the end we will uh, see what we need to do uh, going forward in the closing remarks okay. the effort for this universal human values to understand the existence to live by the existential laws that has been an ongoing search in our tradition particularly but for it has been going on for a very long time what we are sharing as a part of universal human values or uhv is a set of proposals that are drawn from this set of explorations from before it is nothing new but it is placed as a set of proposals for your exploration for my exploration as a co-explorer we are exploring these things together and we can draw out some conclusions as we go uh, into the self exploration so this experiment has been going on at least for the last 40 years as far as i know i've been involved with it since 2006 particularly in the experiments that have been done in mainstream education the results are very encouraging and then we will look into some of the possibilities the important thing I, for me was that this is placed as a proposal this is not something as a set of do's and don'ts it is not uh, uh, you know some kind of preaching but it is something which i can explore and the uh, guidelines for the content that we are proposing is universal universal and not limited to any uh, sect creed nationality etc we should be able to reason we should be able to ask questions it must be rational it should be verifiable that is one can one should be able to check it on their own right and it should not be asked to believe it just because it is stated here or written somewhere not that uh, we will not take what is written somewhere as a proposal we will look into it we will sincerely look into it live by it check it out and then be able to accept it and you know bring it to our our life the content has to lead to harmony it has to lead to understanding of harmony and living by harmony living in harmony so this uh, is one of the you know you can say <clears throat> basic guidelines for what is being shared now so this effort started in 1980s in the form of a course on science and humanism uh, in uh, iit delhi and of course before that a lot of work has been done but i'm just going in with you know this kind of a method in 2001 mhrd established this national resource center uh, in value education at iit delhi and other places in 2005 uh, uhv was started as a two semester course uh, in 2005 it was the first time that a course it took the form of a course and then the results of that were quite en encouraging and then slowly one university after the other university has started you know taking it up so by 2017 more than 40 universities uh, were you know, teaching this course in some form or the other mostly as credit course but many of them were doing it as a audit course also and then in 2017 aicte took it up and today if you see more than 100 universities 
uh, are taking it up. They are central universities, state universities, private universities, autonomous institutions, and so on. So all of these people are taking it up as a, uh, a course, series of courses, I would say. I'll go into those details. In this whole exercise, uh, by 2017, all of this material had been uh, developed. Uh, all the material is freely available. So there is no compulsion that you have to buy something. You know? So it is all freely available. Uh, we can go into the details of what material it is, where it is. I will share the links with you so you can you know, take a look at it yourself. The impact that is there, you can see in the individuals is number one, is that they are able to have a holistic perspective, holistic view of life. Today, if you see, a whole lot is uh, focused on you know my job and my family maybe, but this, beyond this, that perspective is largely missing. So uh, this is one outcome that students are able to see that they have a purpose in, in life, which is a larger purpose than just about the job. There's a great deal of attention to relationship, particularly in the family, in the colleague, with the colleagues, with teachers. Uh, we get a lot of feedback that these students are better at teamwork. So a lot of employers are looking for team, good teamwork. So this kind of uh, result is there. There is an increased sense of commitment towards the family, towards yeah, the society. <laughs> Okay, I've just muted uh, one participant. Okay, so there's an increased sense of commitment towards, you know, their surroundings. And there is a deep sense of gratitude, particularly for the elders, for the culture, for all the work that has been done for the religion. They're able to understand what is being said in a much more deeper manner. They're able to connect it uh, with what is uh, uh, being said in so many uh, texts. So there is a deep sense of gratitude for that ability to do that connection. And the good things that are said, they are able to bring it to their own uh, living in a much better way. Students tend to be more responsible towards academics. So they many of them stop or at least reduce these video games and so many things uh, and uh, you know go into their responsibility towards academics towards the job towards their family and so on so they become more responsible and then the last point here is that they become clearer about their material needs they can see that there is a limit to their needs it's not unlimited uh, at the course that has just started uh, in a formal method uh, at IIT Kanpur, one of the students said that I thought that my um, need for money is unlimited. Not only wanted to be a billionaire, but it was unlimited. And then at the end of the course, he said that I can see it is limited, but my limit is one, one million now. So <laughs> he has limited it. So at least you can see that there is, you know, that my material needs are not the only needs and they are limited in nature. So like this kind of uh, impact is there by and large. As far as the institutions are concerned, they report so many things like this, that there is an increase in referral admissions. There's an increase in class attendance. One of the institutions reported that their class attendance has improved beyond 80%, not only in the human values classes, but all classes. So like that, there is an uh, increase in responsibility of the student. Improved productivity, better academic sincerity, enhanced teamwork, increased employability, uh, reduced family attrition, faculty attrition. This is very interesting that uh, faculty members are no longer placing higher value 
on you know an increment of five ten thousand rupees, but they are placing a lot of uh, value on the colleagues that they have, the way they are interacting with each other, the environment that is provided by the institution, and not leaving for you know small amounts of uh, increment. A reduction in destructive tendencies. <laughs> Many of the institutions report that when uh, students leave for vacation. Uh, they may do a lot of destruction in the hostel rooms, uh, and that has reduced significantly. Uh, the, and there is reduction in symptoms like depression, suicidal thoughts, and so on. So all of these are reported by many institutions. This kind of um, uh, impact is reported by many institutions now. So with all of this, we have been sharing it uh, at large in an international conference. Uh, we have been running conferences continuously since 2012, but they stopped at the time uh, COVID hit us. Uh, we could not, we had done all the work for the 2020 conference. So we, we are going to start that conference again, hopefully this year or next year. Uh, <clears throat> so, People from many countries have been uh, engaged. They have an idea about what is universal human values, what they can do. Particularly Bhutan, uh, they have... Uh, uh, we've had two conferences in Bhutan. And uh, the, Her Majesty, the Queen Mother of Bhutan, uh, you can see on the top right, uh, she has been... Uh, a good, uh, you can say, advocate of human values in Bhutan. So like that, there are, uh, uh, we are reaching out across the world. Slowly, slowly, we are uh, not making a whole lot of effort for it, but uh, in a natural way, it is flowing. I mentioned the ICTE, they have since 2017 taken it up in a very uh, organized way. In their model curriculum, they have put UHV-1 and in their uh, mandatory, I mean, in their uh, uh, model curriculum, they have put UHV-2 course also, uh, three credit course, and they have uh, made a provision for assigning three credits exclusively uh, for this particular course. So they are, uh, and they have put, you know, a lot of things to support that. For example, they are saying that there must be trained faculty available in the, in, and they have put ratios also, one is to 20. For every newly joined student, 20 newly joined students, there must be at least one faculty mentor who is familiar with UHV. At least one UHV, one faculty for every 60 students and one UHV, two faculty for every 120 students. So like that, they are making a lot of uh, effort. Many of the colleges are saying that why only so many faculty? Every faculty should be familiar with uh, values and otherwise, how will they bring it into their own subjects? How will it become sustainable? So all of that uh, is slowly, slowly taking place. In 2022, AICT uh, approved a minor degree in UHV. So the advanced level courses are also now part of this uh, minor degree. And uh, <clears throat> they are now going to be available. Many of them are already available. Some of them will be available as we go along on the self-learning SOAM platform. So it is... Uh, a mixed mode learning platform in which students learn <clears throat> by and large on their own, but they have some face time also. So that is a minor degree in UHV. The whole perspective of what education should look like, it should be holistic and value-based that has been put together in this document which is primarily focused on UHV, on universal human values, but it talks about 
holistic and value based education which has these three components one is the uhb component number one the second one is the component which has the examples of holistic and humane world vision and the main <clears throat> focus of that input is from iks the indian knowledge system because our country has made a whole lot of effort on living in a humane way and earlier in the morning uh, our colleagues had mentioned that uh, we are working for <clears throat> vasudev kutumbakam so they are living examples even now that need to be brought to the attention of the students so that is number 2 and number three is learning the skills which are nature friendly and human friendly and practicing those skills so skills which are guided by values and out of all of these three the critical uh, thing that has to be added is the value component and uhv is one uh, possible way good way of making that Uh, actually happen so this document also i will share so you can take a look at the details uh, recently uh, the uh, new chairman of aict is also uh, you know written his uh, forward a minister of education has seen this and he has written you know that uh, it should be uh, you, you know it should be made available to all so like that it uh, and with frn we help uh, many of these things will become more and more uh, visible to other people where they can take it up so this document is got a whole lot of details of uh, nature friendly and human friendly skills but very little detail most of the detail is about the universal human values component so if we sum it up there are th courses for students and there are faculty development programs for the faculty the courses for the students there is a course called uhb1 which is in uh, the form of 15 hour session 15 sessions one hour each and these are primarily to develop the interest of the students in uhv once that interest is developed in exploring on their own right then they can do the second course and understand harmony and ethical human conduct and those who are interested in going deeper they have all these courses uh the minor degree in uhv they can opt for that and if they accumulate 18 credits they are given a minor degree and for preparing the faculty members the parents and other members of the society there are all of these uh faculty development programs there are also management development programs and leadership development programs but i have not mentioned those so there is an introductory uhv fdp which is 5 days online or 3 days face to face a uhv1 fdp uh, a uhv2 fdp which is either online or uh, actually it should say 6 days online uh, and then after that those teachers who are interested we have weekly meetings for them every week there are uh, about 17 meetings with Uh, you know in different languages uh, with teachers of different different regions so there are meetings in hindi in english in malayalam uh, so like that there are you know different different meetings and then for those who are seriously exploring there is a morning session and kumar sambhav and dr sharmila they take the morning session these days it is about practice as kumar mentioned that this is a process of exploring within and with that exploration within uh, one can also explore outside 
but with that stability of exploring within, having the right understanding within, having the right feeling within, with that, when you explore outside, when you look outside, the world looks very different. Then your participation, participation is very different. So that is the morning session for practice. And of course, there are higher level courses which the teachers can also participate in. So all of these have been uh, you know, put together in a uh, nice holistic manner. All of these are available. We have been able to reach a large number of teachers so far. We have run 406 FTPs. I don't count FTPs, which are you know small uh, sessions, but we count those FTPs, which are minimum three days or eight days, uh, five days, those kind of FTPs. So, uh, officially, there are 406 FTPs, out of which 142 were online. And we had 1.75 lakh registrations. And some of those people, more than 1 lakh people attended these workshops. So we have been able to reach across all the states, all the uh, most of the universities in the country, whether they belong to AICT or not. They are coming uh, on their own. And many of them come for more than one FTP. There is a person who has come for 32 FTPs. But that's an exception. There are uh, you know, people are taking interest in this. The resource material uh, is uh, available in multiple languages. Uh, the UHV2 book uh, is available in English and Hindi right now, and it is being translated into nine other Indian languages. The UHV3 book, which is Understanding Human Being, Nature and Existence Comprehensively, that has also been completed. And then there are other books which are uh, more detailed. And those books are also uh, available and more are being written. So all these books are uh, available. And all of these are available in their PDF format free of charge. So we are more interested in uh, reaching out rather than anything else. So that is uh, why these are available. Um, all these online resources are available. There is a website, a YouTube channel, and a collection of all the reports, papers, and studies on the implementation. Individual universities have their own um, sites. Uh, for example, AICT has their portal and their YouTube channel. So this uh, material is available on these uh, sites also. So I will share these uh, links with you so you can have them. If I look at AICTE universities, more than 100 universities have appointed their coordinators. They are developing their UHB cells and they are slowly taking it up. Yeah. Um, Of course, these are approximate numbers, and it does not include uh, AI, uh, universities and colleges that are not affiliated to AICT. There are many others that are not affiliated to AICT. And UHV is being adopted by more and more uh, universities and institutions. And just to take an example, um, IIT Kanpur, which has been running these uh, workshops since 2006 and running their weekly meeting since 2006, uh, has recently started a course, uh, this course on universal human values and professional ethics. And I'll go into a little bit of detail here because it is an interesting exercise. 
So it is offered by the IME Industrial Management Engineering Department. Six hours per week, three lectures of two hours each. So it is, uh, you know, serious uh, exercise. We were expecting a small number of students, but 76 registered and 40 students are attend have attended regularly. So you can see from their smiles, there are only 15 students in this uh, photograph, but this is their uh, project, uh, you know, their project uh, uh, poster presentation. And uh, a common conclusion from that is this course is very useful for us and it should be made essential for all students. So this is what they said. The paucities of the teachers who can actually conduct the course and all that. Now, I've just picked up some of their feedback. First one is, I have a purpose in life. I'm not purposeless over here. Another one is that my conversations with my parents have shifted from transactions, asking for money and things like that, to being much more meaningful. And this one is interesting that this student is on many student committees. And he's saying that now my focus is on solving things rather than arguing about things. And before it was, you know, a little bit of uh, argument or a lot of argument. And this one I've already shared about the limit to physical needs. So this is feedback from the students in their first course. They did very interesting projects and projects were done in small groups, three or four students, two students, four students like that. And these projects were on the basis of their own questions. So first project is, is right understanding the first priority even for half hungry people? So this was their question. So their faculty said, why don't you go and find out? So this is what they found out. Similarly, another project was about cheating. And they found something very interesting that cheating is rampant, not only in the weak students, but also some toppers. But when they have to stand on their own, when they have to face their interviews and things like that, they might get depressed and they might take to alcohol, drugs and things like that. So it's very interesting for me also. Another uh, project was about analysis of the Drishya movie. If you have seen that movie, the conclusion was that everyone shown in the movie lacks right understanding. And in the next round, we are going to add how would the movie have been if they had right understanding, or even if one or few people in the movie had right understanding. How would our life be in the family if one of us or all of us have right understanding? So like that. Another project was about prosperity. And many of them found that they are already prosperous. They already have more than enough. So now they can focus on more important things in life rather than running after you know, physical facility. And it was very revealing for the faculty also. So the faculty, she's saying that I could connect with myself. I could understand my role as a teacher much better. And I have more responsibility. It's not just to teach my subject and go away. So like that, a lot of uh, uh, input has come from there, from the course. Similarly connected with the students and they are now coming to me to share their issues, their aspirations. They are coming to me to discuss. And she's saying that now I'm opening up and sharing with people. Earlier I was thinking that I'm preaching, but now as I am developing myself, I can 
say more confidently that this right understanding is something important. And if you like, I can share what I have understood with you. And many deeper points like self-regulation versus control. So all those kind of things uh, uh, she has written in what the course did for me. So that is in higher education. Then in school education in Madhya Pradesh, in the school system and the government school system, they have put this as a uh, course which is run every Saturday by the Rajya Anand Sansthan for 320 schools out of which 274 are CM Rice schools and 46 are excellent schools. So they have uh, started this uh, course. There was a set of FTPs for preparing their teachers. It was 100% residential for about 700 teachers. And uh, I'll share with you the you know intensity of these uh, courses. It's uh, uh, quite intense and the government was fully involved in you know, making this happen and so it has started now in these schools, 320 schools. The textbooks, the workbooks and the teacher's manual has been uh, prepared and printed and shared with the, the teachers and the students. They had run, I think, 3 lakh copies so they have already run out of uh, each, each book was printed in some large numbers. So they have uh, shared the soft copy with many of them because they ran out of uh, the printed copies. But these workbooks are very important in this that it is not just about theory. In fact, it is about practice. And practice can happen only when you understand. So it is about understanding and practice and verifying things on your own right, even at the school level. If you go into the um, YouTube channel, you can see the feedback of the children, very interesting feedback of the children. So efforts have been made uh, for adult education also beyond school education. The Rajya Anansasthan, uh, in Madhya Pradesh, they have 62,000 plus volunteers in every district. So they have started uh, including this UHV program in their uh, programs. They call it Anand Sabha, Anandam Utsav, and so on. So they have uh, started preparing their volunteers in that. We are also conducting family workshops and workshops with various special interest groups. Uh, and I also mentioned Bhutan earlier. So UHV in Bhutan is still you know, quite active. Uh, we are going to run several workshops through the Indo-Bhutan Friendship uh, under the banner of Indo-Bhutan Friendship. And then many people are making efforts at village level also. So all these efforts are going on. Uh, when I was in corporate, I used to run this one day workshop. At that time, I had uh, very little uh, knowledge of it, but still we were running because I thought it was important. But it was uh, quite uh, revealing that the participants are interested in finding out about their purpose, about you know, the larger purpose of life and they are able to grasp it. And I found that in my uh, group, which had about 250 people at that time, teachers uh, as the head of the learning center, uh, I had uh, teachers in eight different countries. Our productivity, I could see that had significantly improved. I won't put a number at it right now, but it was very significant that uh, we did work with our own colleagues also and also with the new entrants who came to the company. We were at that time hiring about 8,000 engineers per year. So that was a 
one experiment and they could see that they were more responsible more confident after you know at least they could get an idea of it it would take a lot of practice to actually you know bring it into life into their living but all these things uh, happened during uh, that short interaction it was one day interaction because we didn't have uh, sufficient time for it but still people uh, were able to take something away from it and i wish we could have done a longer interaction uh, given a chance and given an opportunity where uh, teachers are prepared they can do this another experiment has been run in jails and it's very interesting to see that it is lack of understanding that is leading to this violence and the circle of violence is only making it worse and worse so this experiment was done in recently in kanpur district jail uh, march to april of this year the interesting thing from this is that 64% of the inmates are educated people and some of them are uh, post graduates and holding technical degrees also so such people are also landing up in jail so if it is if we are able to and we have done these experiments in other jails also but if uh they have if we work on the right understanding part then it can make a difference and this can be done by educational institutions to start with taking uh, up uh, ownership of running these kind of programs in the jails in their vicinity so that uh, can be actually actualized this can actually happen all this work is being done across the nation by about 500 volunteers and they are doing this pro bono not expecting or taking any remuneration in addition to their work that they are doing they are uh, involved in this activity and we have volunteers here uh, all of us who are in the uhv team are volunteers so like that uh, this whole thing is being done aicte work is also being done by uh, this uh, network this coordination network is there all of it is voluntary except for the aicte uh, paid employees all of the others are volunteers and i'm happy to report that this uh, kind of reach in all states of the nation every state of the nation there is reach so if we i try to count uh, coverage per 1 lakh households so in sikkim for example out of 1 lakh households 586 households would probably have been reached by this method with this network so like that there are you know numbers that we have uh, tried to put together but what my point is that there is a coordination network of volunteers across the country that is making this all happen and our basic effort is for holistic value based education for not only personal transformation but also societal transformation in a very well organized and uh, i would say non invasive manner slow but steady manner so going from whatever kind of society we have now whatever kind of individual we have now to a happy individual a happy family and a happy society and a developed nation so that is what our vision is and all of this is documented in the in the document that i mentioned earlier uh, which i will share
So nice. I have taken two minutes extra, but now I will uh, thank you and we'll go back to uh, closing the marks. Uh, whenever we have opportunity for a longer workshop, we will discuss in more detail. But I just wanted you to have a reasonable idea about the extent, the width, and some of the depth of the efforts that have been made so far and its future possibility. I'm not covering the whole future possibility part because uh, there is a very little time and you are probably more qualified to uh, answer that question about the future possibility. But we have found that it is possible to put it in education and it makes a lot of difference. Those of you who are in Delhi can visit some of the colleges uh, which are working very sincerely on this. So um, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Now well, it is beautiful indeed. Well beginning is half the job done. My request to you is that I'm associated with the core committee on the uh, Urja is the United Nations, where they have about more than 2,000 RWs. Don't yes. we also start with the RWs, resident welfare associations? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hiralanji. Thank you very much. I can see from your questions also in the morning that you are uh, really having a very strong feeling for order in the society, isn't it? So it Starting will... with myself. Yes, yes, of course it has. <laughs> <laughs> we can give what we have, not what we don't have. <laughs> so <laughs> that is very true. Very true. Okay, now I'll hand it over to Sushil ji and uh, Raghunathan ji. Over to you. Sushil ji first, then I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it has been a, a wonderful uh, session. <clears throat> I must thank uh, all the uh, organizers, I mean, the FRNV team and the USV team. Uh, and the participants. I don't know their, uh, their feedbacks, but uh, I see that they, they still we have 120 numbers uh, showing here. So I hope if they are silent, that means they are understanding everything. <laughs> they don't have any... Uh, you don't need a session. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure okay, in the coming times, it's just a glimpse This uh, because the time was limited and uh, <clears throat> to create interest, first of all, because we are so conditioned that we can't even think that there can be something like this which can change ourselves. So and this is only to give you a glimpse and uh, later on, yes, we can through three-day workshops, on-site workshops, physical, one face-to-face, or seven days or eight days workshops. Uh, you, you know, this whole movement can go <clears throat> really forward. And it is need, need of the hour. It, it is needed in all educational institutions, and all, all members of the society. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, <clears throat> Raghunathan ji. It's a great opportunity you have given us uh, to take it forward. Yeah, thank you. At the outset, I must thank uh, Rajul Astana ji, Shushil Jain ji for uh, coming forward and taking continuous effort to fructify this workshop. And uh, Dr. Kumar Sambhav, as I once mentioned to him, he makes everything Sambhav. So thank uh, particularly to Kumar Sambhav and Mr. Umesh Jadam. And I also appreciate the tremendous effort being put in by UHV and UHV volunteers to spread the universal human values, which are absolutely essential. I am grateful that uh, you, you know, we are able to associate ourselves with you and you have been kind enough to uh, conduct this off-day workshop. Now from this, the interest has been generated. I'm sure that uh, there will be demand I will get in touch with later for organizing. Uh, we can, I can organize a retreat, a place and all, and we'll see how things uh, we take forward, move forward. 
But today's workshop is very clear that uh, even though many of the things are known to many people, but yet it's very essential that many things are reiterated so that we really uh, imbibe hold up, uh, hold up. everything in words and spirit. And definitely the basic human aspirations are common. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to have prosperity. Everyone wants these things to be continuous. But um, what is needed, even though all is known about the relationship and there is the need for transformation from the existing beliefs, behavioral patterns, and most importantly, the education system. The transformation is needed. The starting point is, of course, they mentioned is the dialogue. And we do dialogue among, among ourselves on daily life, and we do introspect. But the question to be asked is why we are all not achieving what we wanted to achieve? Why we are not very happy when we want to be happy? Why we are not, our relationships are not good when we want the relationship. This is the starting point. Starting point is the dialogue. And we come to some conclusions during the dialogue about ourselves. And why we are not able to achieve what we wanted to achieve during the dialogue. This is the question. So let continuous introspection is needed was emphasized upon. But more than anything else, the starting point is our education system. We really realized that how important it is to uh, focus on our education system so that our children are inculcated the right understanding, right perspective, unless and until they have the world view which gives them the right perspective, our education is not complete. And that world view is not really emphasized upon from the childhood we are only talking about the self-development and self-achievement instead of talking about the world view. And uh, therefore, I am happy that today many teachers are participating in this workshop. They would understand the need for providing correct perspective. And, uh, I'm, and also the right uh, skills so that they live with the value, the children, and they live, uh, you know, uh, holistically, and they believe in the equitable, just society. And, and they have to believe in harmonious relationship with not only human beings, with animals, with the environment and all. So the starting point has been made, I would say, to, uh, as far as this group is concerned today, I'm very happy about it. I'm again thankful. And uh, uh, I would suggest uh, UHVE has been concentrating uh, higher education and FRNV is trying on the school education. We have a coordinator, Shabad, uh, she is participating, she actively participated also. She's our educational coordinator. We should try to see how we can link up both since they have also now the school education they have taken in other place, we try to look at them FRNV values and UHV values, how we can take it up to larger section of other students' population. Uh, with that, I'm very grateful once again to UHV for giving a wonderful uh, perspective to the whole thing. Thank you very much. And I must thank uh, all the participants, it's really gratifying to see that 130 people uh, continuously, they were uh, they, almost 130 people continuously stayed with the workshop. And uh, I thank you, so each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Raghunathan ji. Uh, <clears throat> our effort is to help uh, those organizations who would like to make effort in the society to prepare their own resource persons so that they can conduct sure, sure. Uh, you know these uh, things activities on a larger scale sure, sure. Uh, we are a small group 
and uh, <laughs> I will I will volunteer. Yes, yes, that's the spirit. <laughs> I will start, uh, I will give my time. I'm a little busy, yeah. but I will find time yeah. to. For the yes, I will join you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, start can be made by participating in ongoing uh, online workshops. Okay, we'll do that. So that is one simple way to start. They are already going on in Hindi and English. So, that is immediately possible. Another possibility is to arrange and attend a three-day face-to-face workshop. Yeah, work on it. We will work on it. Another possibility. In fact, I said that uh, <clears throat> I will even organize a place away from Delhi where we can all be together. Yeah. Let's see how it works out. Yeah. And the best option is, of course, a eight-day workshop which has a significant amount of practice as well as you know the interaction, the discussion, all that. So that is a very intense workshop. It is an immersion workshop. Uh, it is fully residential. And uh, I will, we will go step by step. Now we have done the half a day workshop. We will next go for the three day workshop and later on we'll see how we can. Yeah. So that will work. Will work. Yeah. All the best. There are some hands raised. Uh, we can spend some time on that. Sujata. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Give them. Yeah. Thank you, Ragnathanji. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Kumar uh, Sambhavji, Rajulji, and Ragnathanji. Uh, it's very heartening to know that at the national level, such tremendous efforts are on to bring about uh, a large reach for an awareness of universal human values and to make a difference in everyone's lives. In a chilling scenario like today, in the light of what's happening in Manipur, it's, and now elsewhere and all the reprisals, it's become increasingly imperative to instill these values at the institutional level in all young adults. And particularly in a patriarchal setup, more so for women to be doubly responsible, to be happy individuals and be socially aware uh, to intervene in the right spaces to bring about a transformation in the mindset. So my takeaways, and I'm sure it would be the same for a whole lot of us, would be that uh, continuous individual introspection to have the right perspective and worldview and right understanding, and then also develop skill sets to impart this worldview to young adults. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sujata Ji. Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else would like to share their takeaway in a couple of sentences, they are welcome. Otherwise, there is a short survey at the end of this. As you log off, uh, there will be a short survey of eight questions. So I would request all of you to you know, take a few minutes. Maybe it will take five minutes or so of your time to give your feedback. And also you share your ideas in that. Uh, but if you have any immediate uh, comments, we can, you know, spend one or two more minutes on that. Otherwise, we'll close for today. Very nice. Thank you. Namaste to all. Uh, Raghunathan ji, shall we take a group photo? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Uh, how do we go about it now? Yeah, so I would request everyone to um, um, switch on their video and we'll have uh, a group photo and then all the, we'll take uh, as many screens as there are. Yeah, nice, I can see. <laughs> yeah.
Can you share the group photo also? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that group photo thing. Now we have almost, yeah, one screen is there. So <clears throat> there are five screens, but first screen I'm going to take now. Okay, so let's say cheese, smile. <laughs> so that is screen one. Then screen two, uh, we have only Suman Yadav whose video is on, others the video is off. So we'll... there are already 20 people have left. Yeah. That is to be expected. That is okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about the group photo. Uh, <laughs> group photo. Uh, <clears throat> okay, screen two. Now, a yeah, few people are there. So we'll take screen two. Okay, smile everyone. Okay, we have group photo of screen two, but there are few people, but nevertheless, we have screen two. Then screen three, uh, nobody has their video on. Four, also nobody. Five, also nobody. So we have on this first and second screen, we have video. So we'll, we have taken the group photo. So with that, we will close for today and we will connect again uh, in the near future. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, I was facing a lot of connectivity issue. Thank but you, on sir. behalf of my school, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you here. It had been really a wonderful session and we'll be looking forward to many more in future. Thank Mamadi, you, sir. Where are you located? Sir, I'm residing in my school campus only in GK2. I'm from Balwantri Mehta Vidya Bhavan. Okay. And we are blessed and honored to have Raghunathan Ji as our chairman. Okay, very so nice. We are indeed blessed. So it's all because of chairman, sir, that we are getting these opportunities. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaste to all. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaskar. Namaskar. Anand hai Anand.